We're live. Oh, are we? Welcome, everyone, here to Mia's first video here, YouTube style, YouTube channel here at our great. So make sure you subscribe right here to my girl. Uh, support a barbarian horde, support the RPG revolution. Make sure you go grab your copies of Within the Ring of Fire, drive through RPG.com, or hit me up, Andrew Wood, on Facebook. You can get a $75 PDF bundle to not only get you the first five Within the Ring of Fire PDFs, not only get you an extra bonus besides that, it will get you every PDF ever to be released for Within the Ring of Fire. Come join us, official Facebook forum, Raw Immersive Games. You can find games, you can get into Within the Ring of Fire action, play your catalyst. Make your masks. Uh, have a great time. Go to drivethroughrpg.com and you can download the uh, the character mask for absolutely free. You can sort of have a better idea, look at the system, uh, and definitely get aboard the RPG revolution. Definitely where you want to be, where true role playing resides. A great way to teach people RPGs. You know, if they're getting new into this hobby, very easy, simple to grasp system. Uh, certainly packs a deep, dark fantasy aspect that I'm sure we'll see here tonight as well as in future episodes. You can go check my man Lou out and subscribe to his channel. Uh, you can also check out uh, Philippe Gorzilla and subscribe to my man Phil as well. Um, and, and, and just see all their uh, videos, support them, You know, leave the comments and the likes if you will. Leave us some comments here in, uh, in the box as you're watching live, live with us. We do appreciate each and every one of your support. And... Uh, I'm going to hand it over to our beautiful and talented flame tender to take it away. Okay. You have been traveling in the frozen edge of Niflund for several chains in that caravan to watch towards Flame Dance. You have not seen much life after trade, only a few things only a few fishing villages and you have been heading north away from the Red River. After that, nothing. When you hit the rocky tundra, the food has gone somewhat scarce, but still you manage. The caravan consists of several carts of beasts of burden. Obsolangs are not a part of them. These animals are large with fur-covered bodies. Their fur is white or gray, or rather their fur is white, but because of the long journey, it has grown darker and darker. You sit at a campfire with other members of the caravan. The two moons are leering at you over the horizon. It is beginning of the 14th night in the cycle, 5001. And, and on Phil, you can describe your characters as you sit there in the cold. sitting there by the looming fire as the flames flicker about we see a crova tall tall ogre of roughly around seven foot six red skin blood red all across his bare body black fingernails black lips Along his top of his forehead, there are intricate tattoos tatted all around him and along his body exposed. Looped around his very muscular body and form, there is a mandolin on one end and a small sack for his other accoutrements. And, of course... He has a bit of a, of a loincloth that is much a little bit longer than what would typically be seen for ogres. It wraps around his legs and waist. It's an assortment of furs and such, but creates a nice uh, large belt towards the belly. And he sits there, staring at the fire intensely, turns the mandolin around, and begins to pluck just a bit of it at the strings. And Ander? Oh, sorry, I hadn't seen the, uh, the list here. I was uh, plugging this uh, the live plugs in there for you. A bunch of sites. Okay. 
I am Mihon Yi. Uh, I have a bit of a strange cast in my features. I'm just a, a bit gaunt. Uh, my hair is a burning orange. My eyes are like two smoldering coals, slightly dark, ebbed around the edges uh, to a deep black with a pin prick of orange light on them that seems to reflect more than an eye ought to. My hair uh, has has almost a, a sort of um, in, in a style where it's long but 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 feathered, I suppose you might say. Of course, I'm without any sort of uh, facial hair. Uh, my features, however, are, are unbelievably uh, striking, refined, and chiseled. I look like a master work of art, having stepped out of uh, some Cinderian dream. I have at the current moment an attractive of five uh, being supernatural in the appearance for those of you that are watching at home don't quite understand that imagine a human scale of being a one to ten and then literally having someone who's a fifteen on that scale um, much like uh, the nymphs of cosmic beauty such as reflected in my visage I'm about almost six and a half foot tall I have a refined and chiseled physique I carry a, a large pack upon me that, that has a multitude of small compartments in it and uh, uh, different pouches that are, are carefully sewn into the side of it. it, it while it, it certainly seems like you carry a lot, it's a bit ramshackled in its appearance, a bit th getting to the point of being a bit threadbare, perhaps uh, needing repair in, in another few cycles. If you can sort of imagine that, that frayed aspect to the leather. Now, additionally to that, I carry an obsidian bastard sword uh, etched with strange uh, uh, runic script uh, in silver that, that's placed onto the blade. Uh, if anyone speaks Morgulian, they might be able to, uh, to, to read what it says. Otherwise, it is uh, quite alien. I, I, I'm noted to... Uh, to clean that at times, rubbing a rag with oils on it. Also to note, I smell incredibly good. My bags smell wonderful as if uh, just a menagerie of herbs, oils, ointments. It was a pungent fragrance that blends everything from lilac and lily to jasmine and rose to uh, uh, extracts of roots to milk. And, and all such things uh, linger about me in a most pleasant and pleasing way. I comport myself with great dignity, uh, calmness, and perhaps a slight bit too much uh, kindness, though there is distance mixed with it, as you do note from the flames of the fire, the gloom of my ever so white teeth. And you have been getting looks from most of the caravan eras. Many satyrs have been trying to visit you in the night, but uh, the aggression clearly fended them off. And when you sit in the caravan wagons at day, you feel like a lot of them are talking about you, not just them. They're staring at you, mesmerized, but still, well, hungry. You are perhaps feeling alone as no one seems to have other intentions with you. But beside you sits a bare-faced pharaoh called Jokluk Strix. He looks at the fire and up at a cover. Hey, you got that mandolin? Why don't you bust some tunes? As he looks at the ogre. Hello there. You expect me to play for free? Ha 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 ha. Of course, of course. A free song it is. But remember, that is the only free one you shall get. Hello there. Gather round. 
and feast with your ears, for you shall now hear this greatness. And he says that in, um, in Dazazes, to make sure it, everyone kind of gets it. it begins. There, there are no friends here. It's only Pharaoh, Ogre, and Seder, and the Mihangi. Mm, okay, well, in that case, which I'll... Which the caravan, caravan leader, who is Joloth, is kind of protecting mm. from the others, having no, a bit of decency in his life. They'll probably just I'll, they'll probably be mulish in that case, um, and then he'll begin to start plucking the strings of his mandolin, playing a very elegant tune that ripples throughout the campfire. It's a very melodic tune. It uh, it starts off slow paced at first, but then it begins to pick up and almost moves at the pace of the fire that is burning at the wood itself, going faster and faster keeping up with pace. He looks up at you, his brown eyes, his brown hooded eyes, slowly looks a bit orange in the light as the embers are flowing. And he sits back, turns his pipe on, and enjoys this. We are we're off now, not Nifland, much longer. I, I don't think. I think you will, you will have a good. Uh, you will have a good career in, uh, in flame dance. Hmm. Mm, you think so? Mm. I know so, of course. <laughs> as he continues to play. And as the music plays, people gathering a bit around around this fire instead of some of the others, you feel a little bit of peace in there. Oh. Yeah, you feel a little bit of peace in the twilight as it's making this white landscape, which was foreign for you, only changed ago, now familiar, but now soon dark, as you sit there. And can you give me a perception hearing? As we <laughs> you sit there. Most of the other nights, you have been told to be quiet down in the well, in the long night, you were kept in a cabin and no, never got out. Where this man Joloth Strix told ghost stories to the many Ferrum children traveling with this caravan. Oh, let's see. And um, what did you get, Ander? Did you wrote it? Ah, hmm. That's what I was asking if, if you wanted us all over the world. What did you say? Oh, I was just asking if you wanted everyone to do it. I, I see now that you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, everyone. You are there. Oh. Shit. Ah. Few seconds. Oh, well, you begin to hear footsteps off in the distance, slowly getting nearer. Well, if I hear footsteps, I'm going to stand and rise. Uh, begin uh, to peer the darkness. I'm going to. Um, a, a, a Krova is going to. You know, he hears the footsteps, and um, 
he kind of looks around of his shoulder, looks off from side to side, but he continues his playing nonetheless. Steve's okay, okay, yeah. Playing. If you stop playing, uh, that will... And, yeah, change something. But uh, you stand up slowly, and uh, you peer out in the distance, and you see nothing. You see the snow banks of this hilly, hilly land of the tundra, where Nif once pushed his eyes through, but now it's retracted a bit. And it only leaves, well, snow and rubble. Um, well, as you, you stand on, you can hear that the footsteps have stopped. They're close, close. And, well, they seem like waiting for something. As you stand there peering out, you arrows with no that they are trying to, you, you're peering out, maybe startled, whatever is, yeah, trying to get at you. Yeah, hey, what are you doing? The film man looks up. Sit, sit, sit down again. Do. No, uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are out of we are out of Niffland. Hop, um, hop goblins, don't don't move this far east. Uh, and, and this is not wolf territory. I'm staring off into the darkness and like. I very, very slowly turn towards my left, circling halfway back towards him, fixing my ember-like eyes upon the small creature. But I just stare at him, sort of looking his features over for perhaps a slightly uncomfortable long amount of time, and I say, I heard something out there. A voice echoing on the wind, some animal sound. Did you not hear it? And I move almost seductively towards him, moving with the wind, swaying. He grabs a hold of his saber he has laying there. Racing up, get get the children inside. There are something out there. Mm. As he looks, peering out with his small brown eyes, hooded by his large brow. Mm. They know. Mm. We're here. Mm. And, uh, you, and hearing that they're, they're scattering a bit, uh, as the other, the other people muffling mm. the sounds of what else would be out there. You have like caravans in a, a circular motion, and then you have two bonfires in the middle. Uh, as that happens, Arkova is as he notices that. You know, people are beginning to disperse in a, in a kind of abrupt fashion. In the middle of his uh, of his performance, he just, there's an abrupt doom as it, as he just stops what he's doing, and with a slightly uh, dissatisfied look upon his face, he slings it back over his shoulder and and rises slowly, adjusting his shoulders from right to left. Ugh. I suppose there won't be good music tonight then. Eh? <laughs> And he just begins looking out, peering into the darkness. Phil, what language do you say that in? Moolish. Well, I, I don't. I don't return your comments. Hmm.
Hey, get over here. Get the others out. Speaking to me. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. He's uh, speaking in Moolish to the I working ogre. So in the caravan, as they are gradually getting out of the the caravan, people are getting in. People are speaking a bit loudly, muffling any footstep anywhere or otherwhere. So they're getting in to the caravans. Pharaoh men are looking mm, smaller than they else would be. And the satyrs are, well, gone off sight. As they would be. And, oh, let's see. <laughs> Indeed, they are small to you. Uh, he'll begin to he'll take some steps outwards uh, from the camp, and he'll just be skulking about. His uh, his his brow furrowed. He'll reach down and grab a loose stone from the ground, and he'll just toss it out in the distance. You. Yeah. Nothing really happens, and you wait for some time, just waiting in the cold, cold, niffling wind. People are people are slowly looking out of their carts, not really knowing what was going on, what will be going on. But then, suddenly. You hear something again. This is, yeah, something out there. Everyone's getting quiet, so it's easy to hear. But you hear something hmm, marching slowly. Not a lot of people, but you can still hear the steps of what clearly must be humanoids getting closer and soon. You hear the first whistle. Oh, let's see. Oh, not that. Ah. Oh. At that point, perhaps a little extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to draw out my city and bastards from where I take it, and I, 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 I uncork a small vial with an essential oil, and I pour it into a rag and carefully. Uh, shine up one side of the rag and flip that side over and take it and put it into the flames of the fire and run it ever so slightly through the flames. I seem not to possess the typical Mihangi aversion to flames. This might be noted by one who studies my culture. Uh, and I slide it a second time and a third and a fourth and it makes a slight sizzling that comes off the sword into the cold air above and my ears are perked up paying attention as I focus back my uh, my eyes that see so well in the darkness in the direction of the noise. But I think this is a good time to roll reaction as you are, well, clearly alarmed. I should roll reaction for these guys. Oh, <laughs> nice. So, what do you got, Ander? One. I have a one. Oh. Yes, as if you'll recall, that's particularly particularly bad roll for me. Okay. I'm actually yeah. just staring into reflection on my sword. It's almost polished like steel, though it's dark obsidian. And, and looking at the vapors rising up, my eyes not yet turned back to the darkness, because I am quite distracted. But, uh, yeah, Akova, you hear an uh, arrow wish, uh, wish by you. It's, mm, it, it's a crossbow 
both. It's it lands in one of the carts with a and and yeah, and a child in the cart begins screaming as they, they the women are getting the children inside the wagons. But uh, you are first to react. You can see some shattery figures far off in the well in the cold. Nifflin win. You can see there uh, oh. the gleaming helmets sticking up of the dunes. Ah, I see. Well, as I uh, as that arrow whizzes by right by, and it sticks into the cart, it gives a quick look. Oh, oh and he takes off his mandolin, gently puts that down. But the other stuff, he just lets it fall right off. And tenses his muscles up, flexes his shoulders. Slaps his chest down a bit. Oh, lo there. You've made big mistake now. And now you pay. And he charges right on in. Just runs right at them. Yeah, and I think you can get that. As to get, you get closer, you have charging attack, I believe. So most of them are wearing studded armor. They have all, all of them have different, uh, different helmets, weapon... Most of the weapons is they have yeah bolos, war spears, whips, and uh, yeah of course you can you can see some of the crossbow bolts. Can we see the one with the crossbows? But most of them has a yellow binding around their weapons, and they are large, not large by your standard, mm -hmm. but they are between six and six and a half feet tall, and they are gaunt and thin, and you have. Yeah, it's it he it's the same, um, yeah, physical attributes of the Mihanki. This tall front, but they don't seem Mihanki. They're too orderly, too stout as they are marching forth with their spears forward, and bowlers behind them, all ready. But well, the well the. Well, the first ones that I see, if they're in like a line, uh, he's going to just straight up uh, throw himself onto them and just turn himself sideways into the air and just slam on top of them, taking them down. Yep. Roll, <laughs> I guess. There is um, about five in the, f in the front row, and then five after that, and then, yeah, you see a couple... But it's difficult. It's snowing, a bit. Or rather, it's not snowing, but there's wind and there's snow. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, All right, there it goes. <laughs> okay, so this is what happens. A cobra begins charging right up there, and as soon as he sees the line of them, he goes. Uh, he he just he, as he's running up there, he's kicking up dirt with every stride of his of his massive. Uh, uh, of his massive stride, and he just leaps right up into the air, and he twists his body off to the side. As he does so, he crashes right into them, knocking them down, all four of them that's there, and they all plummet to the ground, all of them going, because they didn't expect the big red man to come, and the big red man has slammed them down straight into the ground. Yeah, and, and one of them directly under you, you can just hear that as you get off of him and you can see he's not he's not moving anymore but the other three are quickly like scattering from you being just uh, yeah that that tactus it's it's way a bit and then they take up their spears and um, you can hear the others behind you about oh what are we rolling oh got a first message on facebook um, you can hear the other side, uh, other fellow moolites or well ogres are uh, getting getting pumped and getting ready, just running in there, running away from the camp to well get at the same guys that you're getting at. Oh. I didn't even roll for that. It's a good attack. No, oh, I don't even have to. Course. But you will be giving me 
I guess, the one left standing. And some bolo. So I will give you yeah, three attack rolls, uh, three defense rolls from you. And one guy with a spear, and uh, two guys with a bolo trying to get you down before you take any more else out. Oh. I maybe it should be right back then. Hmm. Can I do this? Okay, so the first one's a 15, the second one's a 9, and the third is a 13. Yeah. I'm just thinking about how I should do my rolls. But let's see if this is better. Oh. Can you see that? No? No, I, I, don't, I don't see any rolls. I only saw, I only saw your first one. Yeah, 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 so first run. Nah, it's just stupid. Like this, it's probably better. Uh, no, I do. <laughs> she just put it this. Oh. Okay, we have the first with a spear who misses you as you are taking down four of his friends. Not killing them, but taking them down is probably. And then we have one with a bolo getting you, and then another guy with a bolo getting you, and I think he will should boost on seven, I believe. And it he don't boost on you, so you get two bolos. You can you can describe they're trying to yeah wait, tangle your legs together as you are trying to get up, not really wanting you to stay up. They seem. Um, confused a bit, but uh, the other ogres are getting in, and the rest of them are trying to get them. Oh, okay, so as I as I've got their four friends down on the ground, beaten and battered with my uh, clearly superior attack of opportunities upon them, uh, their friends are now getting back at me as they begin to swing their bolus, and on the ground I can feel the heavy weighted things wrap around my legs. Oh. As I look behind me, oh, my legs are tangled, and now they're tangling the rest of me. And he begins to struggle as he tries to get them off of him. Uh, do some... Oh. That's not good. Well, uh, uh, unfortunate... Well... An unfortunate ochre gets tangled in another bolo as uh, it hits him and he smashes right round down in the in the yeah snow staying there ah, as he's trying to get himself out of this. The Vikings are walking slowly using their <laughs> movement to get away from these charging ogres. They wouldn't it seems like they was uh, like they weren't expecting it but still it would be, yeah, hard to say under their helmets if they move frantically backwards. And another ogre it hits, her, hits her on the shoulder and she moves forward to get a grab at him. Oh, well, I mean, they shouldn't roll. Oh, yeah. But. And Ochris gets a uh, gets a, a hold of a tin can, Vikish holds him up and slams him down on a st on a stone. The armor, not really get getting most of the most of the force off, and uh, but he slumps slumps down. She he she looks up, the rage filling her, <sighs> and Ander. Your turn. As you see, the ogres ruining in the very small Vikish front line. Slowly, my head turns towards the right, taking in the situation, allowing it to play out over my eyes. I examine it and think carefully, showing little 
concern or regard for the carnage that's beginning to break out in front of me. I slowly stride, my long legs stalking forward. And approaching the first of I gish, I swing my sword through the darkness of night, and I have a 13. Wait a minute, no, I think I got that wrong. No, I have a 11. Excuse me, 11. Oh, that will not be enough. No, no, I think so. uh, the sword goes uh, through the darkness as the Vigish leaps backward, my eyes still carefully studying his gaze uh, as, as he moves back, showing caution to the strange black blade that emanates such a sweet smell and the wind it leaves behind. See his eyes peering out from his uh, his riffing mask, which looks like it looks like a a skull of a big cat with two fangs framing his face and leather around his around his mouth, just showing those black beady eyes and the some of the yellow skin. And Phil, you can try to get at. Uh, some of the Vikish around you, they are slowly getting up, but, uh, yeah, there are other Orcas. I'm not describing all the Orcas, but they're fighting. Oh, yeah, that's enough. Oh, it is? All right, cool. All right, so as, yeah. one of them tries to, as one of them tries to get up beneath me, I feel them wriggling about, and he's, he spreads his legs just ever so apart and uses the force of his own might to break apart the bullets that's around him. And then afterwards, he maneuvers himself right around over top of the uh, the second one that's squirming from underneath of his massive frame. And he looks them dead in his eyes, and his eyes go wide as he then pulls his hand back ever so as he presses his palm up against his face. And he tries to go, but just before he knows it, boom! With a supreme strike, swift as the wind, he punches his face and then pummels him right into the earth, his fist sinking into his cheek as he meets the dirt, marrying it with his own lips. Did you, you do not get out of the, 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 the band. It takes time getting out of the bullets, but you can mm. they're close because you just slammed in on them, so that's... Uh, yeah, they they haven't got that reach on their war spears yet, but they're trying at least. But yeah, and then you hear uh, the Jolof Schnicks having a, a ah, as he was staying at the camp and. Uh, uh, Crossbow bolt. The crossman, crossbow bolts are now shooting directly at where the caravan car is. Isn't he? has got a in his uh, in his shoulder. They're they're closing the doors of the the caravan, trying to yeah get a little bit of shelter of the well assault, but not really defending themselves in any other way. As we go to Anna, with the Vikings just jumping back from you. Uh, my eyes are still focused on the Vikings, carefully studying and reading uh, his movements as I stride forward, looking him over with an utter lack of remorse or compassion in my eyes. I have a 12. That's not enough. All right. as, as he moves back, the sweet-smelling obsidian blade uh, raises above my head, slicing through the night, sliding ever so slightly across the front of his armor as my eyes lock onto his as I continue to push forward, studying him, studying his reaction. Smelling him. 
enjoying and finding the sin disgust in simultaneously for very different reasons. He is moving slightly, slightly. They are moving you more and more backwards, all of them. They're not really attacking as much as they are moving you backwards. I guess, Eros, you will recognize this far faster than an ochre smelling fight. But they're well, they definitely... They're using sort of like pack tactics on us? Yeah, they're trying to get you back away from the others. I have the forte of hunting, and I also have... Yeah, that's why I thought you would, you would, yeah, yeah. You would yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so, so I watch him again. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to push him back as I swing at him. I'm, I'm showing no regard for such things. But, I think it would be Phil. As they are trying to move you back, not really attacking, right? Oh, that's a, that's a nine I got. And as I and, and as I try to to strike back at the other one, they've begun to, to to squirm away, and the bullet has been hindering me quite a bit. Oh, so the oh, the cumberment of it, I. <laughs> and he begins to struggle and waft with his punches as he is not used to fighting with himself being bind as such. He slams down, his fist hits the ground, piles of dirt, and a nice little plume go up into the air. <laughs> And they will, yeah, as you do that, you see, oh, maybe you don't see it. You have to roll defense now. I think acrobatics, if it's nets. Well. That's a five right there. <laughs> well, you, yeah, it's a leather-enforced uh, net getting over you from from the sides as you're moving perhaps these dunes where something was skulking and then suddenly, yeah, you see it. You could describe as you get tangled oh. in pretty, uh, so, yeah, so not after, take any so damage from this. It's not a so, so after he like misses with his punch and the, and, the, and the plume of sand and dirt spills up in the air, he gets into his face, and then right from over his shoulders he sees... Uh, whoa. Uh, he sees that net like a spider's web. It comes upon him and entangles him, and now he is in the uncomfortable position of feeling like prey, of feeling like something wrapped in a web. And he sits there and struggles as this thing entangles all around him, and that only makes it worse. It takes, uh, it takes uh, unless you have something to cut it with, it takes three rounds to get out of it. But yeah, the, the ochres are, are too getting uh, thrown over these nets. Some of them are avoiding them, but still some of them are uh, in bolos. And uh, the cry crossbow bolts are not stopping at the carts, as Ferrum, who were defending the carts, are falling, or trying to get into the carts. <laughs> Just trying to, uh, trying to open the door to get in, showing some of, yeah, well, that guy's at least, cowardly nature. But we go to, well, another net getting thrown. Oh, well, that is a uh, 10 arrows as uh, another guy from the side is trying to get a net up. I, I would suppose that should probably be well more than enough, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. I right. think you can. Yeah, I would thought so. Uh, all right, so as the net is is thrown at me, as, as my bladed arc this way towards the Vigish, my head turns, seeing the net, I bring my sword across, slicing uh, the net effortlessly into two as it, as it uh, falls past me on either side. Uh, harmlessly hitting the ground with a small sound. I breathe in deeply in my nose. The small iron studs hit the stone around you. And it is your turn. 
Is there a Vikish in front of you with a war spear? My turn. Yeah, yeah, it's your turn. He looks. Yeah. Never looks and looks at you. He's. He looks weirdly at you, but. Yeah. I have a seventeen. Yep. Yep. You got. Is he defeated? Yeah. As 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 the blade cuts this way and then back this way, slicing the net in the air. I twirl it back around underhandedly, swinging it. The Vikish's eyes get very, very large as a blade slices through his neck, his head elevated off of his shoulder, spinning around, his eyes reflecting back the flame as his head uh, uh, slowly hits the ground. Vikish, having such small amounts of liquid inside their body, there is no gusher of blood that would be expected but I smell, breathing in deeply, the perfume of his death as the head lays on the cold ground, staring up, uh, its eyes blinking in the last few seconds of life as intelligence fades from his eyes, replaced only by a, the inert, lifeless state of death. The body lunges forward with the spear as I move from its way. It crashes upon the ground. I stare out with eyes unmoving and caring and feeling towards the others as I sniff the air. Yeah. Cool. It's, it's Phil's turn. Are you trying to get out? Or? Oh yeah, he's going to try to get out. Yeah, sure. You have any sharp objects on you? No, no, no. No sharp objects at all. It's just him entangling himself. <laughs> as the feeling it's of being left uh, helpless upon the ground is most agitating indeed. Yeah, it seems really like they're leaving you. It's like, oh yeah, he's he's uh, he's done, and then they are moving towards another, circling them with their spears, not seeming like they want to harm you too much. This this insults him. Not you at least. Not the not the not the yeah. Sorry. This insults him a bit as they just start walking away as if now he has been taken care of and now he has even more motivation to get up because he is going to take care of them afterwards. So he will diligently begin to working on getting himself out of there. But they are, by the way, killing Pharaoh like they were, well, insects by the carts. But this seems like. Yeah, you guys, the og and the other ogres are getting not getting stabbed at or anything too much. Unless, until they see Eros is uh, dealing, and uh, there are three who try to throw a bolos at you. Oh, yeah, not doing really well. We have uh, uh, 12, uh, 16, and uh, 13. Well, I got three attacks against me, you said? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, After you, you sliced that fellow. It was 12, you say, the first one, yes? Nope. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I, I just rolled a 12, so that one that one goes to me. And then a 16, you say? These, yeah, it's uh, Bolos, just so you know. Yeah, okay. Uh, so... Yeah, that that one, I uh, 21, and the second one. The third one was how much? 13. It was a 13? Yeah. I missed that one by one. That is a 12, so the third one has gotten me. Scribe. Okay. It's, uh, hello. Uh, the bolos are thrown at me. My, my head... Very slowly moves down, catching the the flight of these bolos. Perhaps only my superior vision and darkness uh, aids me. As the first ones uh, come towards my ankles, I uh, leap up over them, and they go flying into the flame itself, being now burning uh, as as the leather pays the price for what it attempted to do. Uh, the second one uh, coming towards me. Uh, misses ever so slightly the uh, weight snapping against um, my boot-covered ankle, uh, bouncing off 
uh, as and I, I look back towards it as it as it falls off into the darkness, allowing a temporary distraction as the other one wraps around me. As it wraps around my legs, uh, I attempt to move forward, unfortunately, causing me to smack towards the ground as I look as I as I fall. I smell uh, deeply in all the sense the rich earth, the cold stone, the sweat uh, of my companions, the metallic scent of the vigish, the violence, the blood, the pain, uh, heavily connects with the ground. And as I look up and back towards the things in the darkness. Um. One of them with a war spear will, uh, yeah, get. He's getting closer at you, but not, uh, not now. Um, I hope you're still trying to untangle yourself as you are struggling with that, and you have, you see your other ogre brothers and sisters getting fallen to the same tactics as, well, both of you. Either nets or bolos. Slowly, it's only you, fey creatures, up and standing, and these, well, these kind of tallows, as the pharaohs are screaming in the backgrounds, getting killed, unless they is inside their carts. But one Vikish man walks up to you across Eros, your name's now um, Akrova, with his spear and says between his teeth, Quiet, slay, still. He says this to Julian, to you, Akrova, as you're trying to figure it out. Not yeah, having his spear ready to, well, spear, spear you. If he says that into Julian, I do not understand what he says. And as such, I, I simply raise an eyebrow to him and think that he is trying to kill me, and I struggle even further to try to get out. He shakes his head and then try to stab you, trying to get you. Not to move. Uh, 14. I rolled. That's an 18 right there. So as he tries to stab, uh, still remembering, um, you know, reverting back and thinking about uh, how he would fight defensively in this situation from those from those many cycles that he trained and how he brawled and fought, all of a sudden knowing that he is on the ground, he begins to roll off to the side as the spear lunges and hits it the, into the sand and then does it again and again while, while he's trying to struggle himself free. He is nimble just as he is strong and broad of shoulder. Well, he... Yeah. Curses in, a, in the, this unknown tongue as he's... Just, Pecking at the ground with his spear and stopping a bit, not running to break the spear the tip off as he gets more and more frustrated with you struggling. Ah, uh, you muted me, yeah. Oh, well, arrows. There's a guy, the the same guy, um, who has uh, who followed you. He's getting back with a war spear, trying to disarm you of your things, of your no. Well, that's a fourteen in response. No, oh, it was arrows. You don't have a weapon. I can't disarm you. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. My bad. Fourteen. <laughs> uh, yeah, he uh, he got it. He got a uh, uh, seventeen. So he disarm you, and we leave you there. 
bound, ready for, you can only imagine what. A lot of the Vikings are looking strangely at blue arrows, but, well, we leave you in the snow, in the dirt, as we go to flame dance. to find the right place. No worries. Yeah. Ah, here. And for you, I guess only you, we start on the morning, on the, on the second day of the cycle 5001. You are in your bedchamber in, uh, in the Orkish community, which is closed off from the other communities by a little tree feet fence, but it's still there and still it's a bit on a sc of a showing the difference between what you are and what else are. You are in your, yeah it's morning, you're not risen, risen yet and you let's see wake up to a song that seems to penetrate the earth that you are beneath it by one storage by our standard in an old oak tree dead long ago but its stump still stands there now covered in stone and you are sleeping down there like most of oh in most other ochres but you wake up to a song. It's beautiful. You only hear this one voice. But yeah, you wake up to this. Do you do? It penetrates you are you are like one story down, she, she says. I I you know, my eyes I, you just cast in a, a deep shadow, skeletal in the visage. Um Obviously, I'm not wearing any sort of clothing at the moment, but I sit up, right, and I breathe in slightly before looking around uh, a moment. And it takes a few moments for me to actually realize uh, something's, something's different. In which case, you know, I, I clothe myself uh, very, you know, I, I have next to uh, basically a stone slab with some furs uh, put on it. Next to that is a is a wooden a wooden table with uh, all sorts of um, small, strange-looking tools. Uh, and then there's another sort of table that has uh, several neatly folded robes, uh, four of them. All everything is in its place. Everything is neatly hung. Uh, there is a slight hook uh, in this in a nearby stone where the robe, um, uh, a si very simple brown robe, hangs. But I go over and, you know, I'm, I I guess outwardly I don't physically show that I am enjoying the music, but inwardly you know, I, it's, I receive a sort of meditative calm from those fine uh, tunes. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I take my time, uh, satchel going around my waist, uh, around a, a tunic and some pants and then a robe. I clothe myself. Uh, the clothing is very, though it is simple, it is clean. It is not covered in dirt, uh, which is perhaps common for others of my kind. And I make my way up the stone steps. There's roots over it and whatnot. And I bank myself uh, up to the, I guess, ground level uh, at this point. And uh, being, you know, it's it's kept fairly dark uh, around here. Not not much light. Um, except for a few candle lights and whatnot, but I, I situate myself up and uh, I do gaze outside if there's a window or something. Or, or I do look for where that noise is coming from. The building, the building is, is like, like at the roots of a, of, a of a tree trunk, so you have like a lot of lines going up to the same 
lot of stairs going up to the same open direction. You can see there's other outside on the on the just roads trying to get out. Some of them more or less just, but all of them are orcs in this side. And you, Trevor, you are waking up in one of the small huts outside in the orcish community. You are not allowed inside the sleep inside the temple. You are though allowed inside. I do have some pictures of the huts on the uh, road twenty, but it's just yeah, you're not allowed. But you hear this okay. voice, which is playing on road twenty, um, and you go out there, Lou, and you see other people. They are watching, mesmerized, just looking around, trying to figure out where the song is coming from and enjoying their quiet, well, wood of whispering, whispers getting filled with song. I walk by them almost like uh, um, very, very sort of quietly, uh, stoically, yet I, I, you know, I do like walk around and whatnot, but I'm really just cutting through uh, cutting through the people that are sort of gawking, um, more dutiful step, a uh, pace to my step. As I, I, I purposely look for uh, a matriarch uh, or someone of um, title to ask them. You, you know, know, you know, the matriarch wouldn't be out. She will always be in her in her studies, not letting anyone in there, or her sister, MF not letting anyone else there. But you see her, she's also getting out of the same building as you are, but she's also standing, her gaze are fixed towards the city, her, well, green eyes under the painted eyebrows, wanting to look less holdery, which is strange for you. But uh, I, I, she, I, like, I like beeline to her, like I, I see her then I turn and I almost mechanically and you know, I approach her and then I go down to one knee and I bow my head down. Matriarch, what is it that you wish to be done? This. This is the sister. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and I keep my head down and I wait a few moments. It is not the time of the festival. Surely it has passed. Why do they continue with their incessant noise? And then rain begins to pour down, just pouring, and you look up to the skies, and she looks up to the skies as you are stopped. And you can see swan clouds, thunderbirds up there. No, well... No lightning. She looks up. Mm. And like I look up and I there's a slight I don't smile but my it's a, a very slight gesture on my face that would convey sort of happiness in this that the rain would drown out that noise. Race up. And I stand back up. I do not believe this is any of our concern. I do not know what. I have to speak to my sister. And she walks in and not bow and I like Yeah. And we go well forward seeing just days of this, just pouring rain and it, it never stops. It's day in and day out, it just rains. People are complaining about their crops. Others are speaking lowly, not in the old community, they are just complaining and not, but some are speaking lowly of 
gifts of the lake, his wife, as the rain keeps pouring down for days. And we skip to the tenth day. It hasn't stopped raining. The streets are mud. The crops are getting washed away. Seeds not getting planted properly. Probably. They can't keep it in the earth. And we see you, Kuro, walking slowly out of the, of the old community. And there's just mud everywhere. And still this constant rain hasn't stopped yet. And, well, you're walking out there maybe to just get inside something better than your heart. The rain is getting inside the, inside under the, well, non-existent floor and filling your heart with mud. And, but only if you could sleep like the other orcs inside the temple, but no. You must stay out. And the, the streets are nearly vacant, empty. This is, a, this is a large city, but if people can stay in at this time, they will stay in. And as you stand there looking at how quiet the streets are for once, you see something large like you see a large like oval running you don't see really see lakes till you you get there and you see a strange ostrich I hope I'm pronouncing this right running towards you fast directly in your direction and on top of it you see a blue feathered creature looking just as exhausted exhausted as the bird I stay. Well, they're going to ram into you if you're not moving. And as you stand there for a while, they do, I guess. <laughs> oh, well, it's 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 unlike a cartoon not to uh, jump out of the way. So as as I'm in my hut and I've got like a broom and I'm just like, Johanne, and I'm cursing in in a uh, Calixian, just like scraping the mud out. I see this creature. Oh. Now, now what's what's all what's all this then? And then it, it it gets closer and closer. Yeah, and I and I I jump to the side and I and then I just begin a a, a tirade of Calixian curses, uh, t towards this this fellow who is so rude as to uh, nearly run run me down outside my own hut, my own hovel. And he he stops up and look looks at you all uh, stops the bird and looks at you with these big orange eyes and looks down at you. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I didn't see you there. And then hops down. Um, sorry. Sorry is all you can say to me. You almost killed me. I was here minding my own business. Just uh, wiping up all this mud here. I think, I think your way to repay me, and I just, I just shove the broom into his, into his like feathered little claws. Oh. I think you've got some work to do, son. Uh, uh, and, then, I, and I and I take a, a seat on, a, on my favorite nearby stool, and I, and I just watch him like, hmm, hmm. Uh, and the hippo stands befuddled at you, holding the broom. Oh, I, I, I have to. Uh, I have to find an orc with a mirror. That's what you she told me. You have to find me. an orc with a mirror after you sweep my floor, son. Uh, no, no. She she told me it's safe now. We can. She, and it, it tries to walk over to you with the small legs, handing you the broom over your legs. Ah. Yeah, I don't accept like. She's there, standing it very, very, very like quietly, just uh, enjoying not having to run. It's nearly, yeah, six feet tall, spurred. Um, hmm. But. Um, I, I, I have a, and then it looks up at the, and the, st the stone tower. Uh, 
Uh, and then it looks at you, and then it looks at its bird, like you would steal it, and then stands there for a while, contemplating, just looking. Uh, I, I, am, I am looking at that. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 I have to. Mm. And it just looks at you and then slowly like takes the uh, reins and then begins walking away from you looking. Uh, okay, so, mm. and, and, and as he goes, I, I just look to my hut like, ah, it's not going to get any cleaner. So I begin following him. Now, now, now listen here. This, uh, I can help you find this orc. I, I know all sorts of orcs. I see them around here. They're just uh, doing their business. I, of course, am... Uh, I, I know the temple. You know, and I point to the temple that I'm not allowed to, to sleep in. I know all sorts of orcs who, who live there. and uh, I can help you find your way. All you need to do is uh, give me a little recompense for being your guide through this place. You understand? Know I, I don't have time. And it's just keep rolling away from you trying to get at the... No, you don't have time if you keep standing here jawing with me. I think we should both get up on this uh, great beast here and uh, see what we can see. I, can. I just I just start climbing up. He, you know, <laughs> I, he <laughs> hired me whether he wants to or not. It just it looks up like all fossil, all this pit is just setting and wrong directions, it's just soaked in water, it just looks up at you, has a little cloak over but it's just soaked. Uh, but she, she told me the one from, one from the mirror! <sighs> Please! Now, at, at these words I start looking a little nervous, having uh, some knowledge of Things that might come from a mirror. Now, now, why, why you want to go messing around with that there? The mirror, son. That's you don't want that. Let's just find this orc. Give me your message. We'll get, we'll get our pay. We'll split it, sixty forty as we're owed, and uh, then we'll see, uh, we'll see what we can see. Uh, uh, uh. And it just walks, it holds the reins and just keeps leading you forwards. You still on its ostrich, and it goes to the temple trying to find find finding some place to get tired of, and just looks up at you a bit. It, now, it seems how, too how about, tired to deal with you. Mm -hmm. How about right there? You can time up right here. I'll keep an eye on it. This is a fine fine beast, fine plumage, kind of like yours. Looks, yeah, you're you're a fine looking fellow there. Just looks up at you as the ostrich just turns his head, looking at you with those big, big eyes, with those long eyelashes, looking back at you, judging you, it seems a bit. But it taps its legs and. Can. And it waddles inside. And. Yeah. Well, yeah, it waddles inside, and soon we see that. See another place. It's down there. In the in the temple, in the dungeons of the temple, you see skulls standing. Some of them orc, some of them Nergali, and one of them. Oh, you never. She talks. You never know what it was, and no one, no one seems to want to tell you, as it sits there mm -hmm. on the, the favorite place. Are you following it, the, the hippon? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, it looks there. Uh, hmm. it seems it's not. It seems like it knows its way down there, as it waddles down the steps, and then looks up at you. And waddles further, banging on this this door, and we see uh, you 
RP tax and your master. Oh, I should get his name. I, you know, I get up and I'm, you know, I, I make my way to the door to open it, as is master doesn't need to be doing that. And I open it like slowly, and you just see it. it there's barely really any light. And uh, but there is uh, another orc uh, there, and I, I look at you, and I look down at the uh, Hibben. Ah, mm. uh, are you the one with the mirror? She told me. Yeah, he, he, he must be. Just just look at him. He's got the mirror, and he's got he's got our pay for delivering this message. That's what, that's what I say. I just look, look, he just looks up at, at you. Just, uh. I look, I like saying to Julian to the uh, little, uh, little heaven, and just go, 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 go. Not sure if it understands, but basically, why, you know, why did you bring an uninitiated here? It's speaking, it, yeah, it, yeah, it looks up at you. It, he followed. Mm. I I'm not initiated, but I was told told the way. And I, then I like there's a pause. Mm. The door closes, uh, but on the oh. other side of the door, you know, I I, I go to the I go to the, <laughs> it, it begs frantically, just oh no no. I go it to seems... the mentor, like I turn, like I close it, and I just turn back to the to the mentor. You know, I see the mentor just like looks back, like it's got its attention at that time. I'm like. Mm. And I go and I slowly open the door, all the way. And like you know, I, I step aside, off. and I gesture, you know, to to enter. Um, in case you could see, uh, my features are look a little more gaunt. Um, I am an orc, um, but I'm not. Uh, my you know, I'm wearing some sort of nice sort of. A uh, nice robe, nice simple, yep, yeah, simple brown robe, and like a little robe tunic underneath. And um, I've, uh, you'll see that like my hands, my fingers are a little bit, you know, have like I have like little spindly thin fingers uh, as I'm just holding the door, and I and I step aside and, and I like gesture for the hibbon to go. And then I look at you, um, uh, Trevor, with a, with a. Particular amount of intimidation to me. I I do look at you mm. with um, sort of like a stern sort of gaze, like you're not allowed to, you know. And I have like this sort of this skeletal almost massage over my face, or the way the light cuts in. I very sort of my cheekbones are very pronounced, and you cannot see my eyes. Uh, only the slightest of glint underneath the hard shadows under my brow. I just look at you. I shake my head. Uh, and, and you know, I, I, I definitely am. I'm reacting to this, uh, to this orc here, this imposing figure, its stern face and beady eyes. And uh, I suppose it, I suppose it's time for some, some catalyst description. You understand, baby? And so we have Kuro. Uh, his, he is often known by his epithet, Kuro the liar, for he is an actor, a gambler, a ne'er do well, a rambler, uh, a backbiter. You know, he is, he is known in the community as, as all such things. And he is a kitsune. Uh, a singular fox tail uh, extends from, from the back of this, of this fey creature, standing at the small kitsune height of five foot six, uh, slight build as they, as they all have. He could be mistaken for a small mihangi if he were not, in fact, stepping away from an orc being intimidated himself not doing the intimidation, and his, uh, his skin is light, his eyes are orangish red, his hair and, and foxtail are also both matching snow white. He is um, reminiscent of a, of a winter fox, as it were. Uh, some, of the, some of the kitsune are, are orange or brown, but he is of the, uh, he's of the the stark white variety, and he wears traveler's clothes 
these currently being a, an orangish or umber in color. He has leather on. He has a, a traveler's cloak. The clothing is, is nice enough in quality, but it is quite obvious that this is someone who is often, uh, w whether by his own volition or not, someone on the road. And they are trail-worn. And he has upon his hands uh, some thick leather gloves. And he appears to be completely unarmed. Of course, he just wandered out of his out of his hut. And so this could only be logical. And, you know, and I actually walk, you know, seeing the, the heaven go go to the mentor, you know, that's that's their business. Um, so I, like I step a little fo you know, closer to you, uh, Kuro, as I close the as I pull the door behind me and I stand in front of the door. I'm I'm standing I stand at about six foot five, a very sort of average height for uh, an orc. And I just look at you, and I and I just stand there, just just watching you. And uh, now and then, kind of a low grumble. Now and then, I don't like show any sort of emotion in my face, like just kind of cringing or anything like that. Now I'm just I just look down at you. Now uh, I understand you see me around. I'm singular in my appearance you must you must understand this and I've seen you around oh uh, I, yeah this is a good question this language actually I am speaking to you in Fraxen of all things perhaps to gain some trust now you know I'm not gonna divulge any secrets nor steal any secrets I hardly understand what is going on around here and I, and I look to the skulls this this strange place this dark place, and it, it triggers a, a memory in me. I'm holding a skull, a human skull, and yet it has two, two long fangs, and I'm placing it upon a, uh, a, a rack, a shelf, just like, just like is seen here, and I feel sorrow and, and loss in my heart, and, ugh, and then I sort of snap back to to where I am. I no, know no, who I... you are. I know well who you are. This is why you are here. You will stay here until you will not. Yeah, that. Why that do you follow the courier? Hmm? Tell me. Why do you follow that courier? I was uh, acting as his guide. You see, he uh, seemed a bit lost. He almost ran me down on his on his great beast, and I decided to, out of the goodness of my heart, to yes. join him and uh, help him deliver the message. And in doing so, we would uh, split the the reward. I I understand it will not be. Uh, a sumptuous bounty, but we are simply doing <clears throat> doing our duty, you understand, to the good if people payment, of Flame Dance. If payment is what you wish, I'll have some seeds sent to your abode. Unfortunately, seeds have been difficult to bury. <sighs> yeah, seeds, uh... All right. Uh... I'm partial to, to pears and corn. I like the, all these things. Mm, I will the, uh, sure. Diet. Seeds. Be sure to find you some seeds of pear, corn. Do you have any? And if you have any grades in farmer, um, I'm not sure no. if you do or not, but <laughs> all right. but I'm just like listing th these things. From, uh, yeah, I'm definitely disappointed with the with these the offerings. Melon, and you will have uh, your melon. All right, yeah. You will have your your payment. You uh, you have anything that these these melons and these fruits uh? Grow into, you know, what I'm saying, I'm saying, talking about your sweet bear wine, melon wine, ice wine, 
fire wine. These these are the sorts of things that I can I can do with. Unfortunately, that cannot be made at this time, nor by me or by those that dwell here. You will have to go into Flame Dance proper to get what you request. All right, I just thought maybe you had a bit of a stash, secret stash in these these grim grim quarters here. I look around, just look back at you. Go on, return to your home. I'll see to it that the seeds are sent. All right, I'll uh, I'll leave you to your skulls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I sort of slink out silently. You know, and I I just watch you like lead, go up the sort of the stairway, and then I. Turn back and I open the door. I make my way back and very quietly, you know, that and you know I, I look away from the moment, you know, I, my head's down when I enter back in, um, you know, like that. That's their conversation, you know, between the courier and the, the mentor. But, and I'm trying not to like, you know, interrupt it or anything. Just quietly move the stone door and like slip back in. Yeah. Yeah. Hippen looks at you when you when you walk in. You're locked there. And Larish so Rush, is, uh, is making a move like, using his clawed Nagali hand close. I go down on one knee by my head as it's my custom when I'm summoned. Yes. He has small flash of sadness over his eyes, and then he looks down again at the hippon. It, he, he looks, trying to discern the gender of this thing. It told me that the lake of Laris, the lake, your mm, mother sent for us is ready for hmm, is ready for well exploration. We would need some you will need someone, some people going there with you. I believe he will go and I will get some other magi to follow you. But be aware, I have been there once, and the mirror seems to be clouded when close to the salt. Maybe not now, when everything is a bit thinner. Hmm. Do you understand? I nod. I don't respond, just nod. It was told that there once were a great battle between the orcs and the Vikish. A war of wood, steel, and the wood did not break. But the steel stood proud till this was worn thin. And whatever was left of that battlefield is now covered in this salt lake. That's all I know. I do not know what. Would you? Do you ask of me to put together an expedition for this? One of my own choosing? A few members, perhaps? Well, we don't have much to give from necromancy. Our coven is small, very small, as he looks 
to the run other oak sitting nearly like a statue, so old is she in the other end of the room, so quiet. No one sees her unless they know she's there. I understand. I would want you to speak to the Temple of Lefraxu for aid in this, or I could go for you. I no, believe. I will go in your stead. He smiles at you. His whiskers moving slightly. He has too much whiskers for a more, more normal Degali. Too much fur toughing up there. He still sits down as a Nagali wants to do. Slumping when I down. stand up, he sits down. I just like relax as I stand back up. Well, take the courier with you. And he looks up at you. I can. I, I live. I live close by. It was what my, my my wife's mirror as you're walking. She she has eggs. So. Uh, mm. Mm. Just a low grumble from my throat. I just listen to this incessant little thing. Yeah. We've been waiting for for many, many cycles for this to happen. But I, I, I knew when it, when, when it was, and I had to, had to go. Because it's wobbling up. Almost mechanically, you know, I respond just, mm, how good of you. You must be very proud. And it, it seems, it seems proud now. It's like fixed its feather a bit. There's no kids soon wanting it to sweep in front of the heart, feeling a little bit better with himself, maybe. As you walk up and up until you are on the first floor, this building is a second story building, yet there's a lot of stories underneath where people sleep. And, well, your coven has its quarters, small quarters. Most of the, well, Stairs are made by the, the actual wood, but all the chisel, all the works, all the walls are stone made under there. And you walk up to, well, MF's office, knowing that you will not get into Greece. She looks at you, looking at the hip and first, confused. Then she looks at you, sitting up. Yes. What? There has been word Please. sent by this courier. I have been given the appropriate access to a trip in a lake for investigation and experimentation. So, you want me to send something with you? A cart, perhaps? Some oxen? Some other? How are you? I'm, I'm not. Sorry. She seems a bit frustrated. I see a lot of, like, a cup of wine standing there, but... I just take note of that. I just don't say anything, though. I can grant you this expedition as she looks up at you. I will get someone to send with you. How many do you acquire? Four? One's to manage the cart and beasts, and that is all that I need. One. 
hard hands. Mm, perhaps those that know the land better than I. I'd say like my head goes down at that. I'm like, mm, a little ashamed at that. She doesn't seem to give much, no, much notice to that. She looks down at the heaven. Well, I can send you one who, with a map, will always know where you are. Is this good? He doesn't know the area. But he can be spared for now. Mm, just not. It's not my place to be given orders here. So I just, I just nod whenever she says. Just, mm. yeah, but she's still, she's still like having a lot of. Mm, you see, she has a lot of respect for you for what you are. Mm -hmm. But she, I will get the plans ready. Thank you. Which yeah. it will be done appropriately as soon as possible. Soon. Be ready for tomorrow. Mm. And soon. We see two of you with the ostrich, the hippon, and a cart. And you, Kuro, have been given a map. They know what Kitsunes are say, say, seen to be uh, known to be able to do. Finding that spot in the north. And, well. As soon as I see him, you know, like I'm yeah. making my way to the cart. You know, and I just, and I like stop for a moment, and I see him. And I slowly shake my head to myself, and I, and I make my way, uh, you know, to the cart. And I just look at you with a, oh, just silent contempt, as I, I look at you. And I, and I like just make my way onto the cart. And Sue is standing beside you, Kuro, looking up at you. His wing not, his wings not able to fly in this weather. As he looks up at you, his small bright body looking and, and, and like touching you on your leg. Now, now why, don't we, why don't we get you up here, sir? And, you know, I'm, I'm like giving deference to this, this tiny, tiny sprite and I, I lift him up, you know, sort of like put him on the cart and then put, put the map like, you know, above him as, as an umbrella, you know, giving him, giving him at least some, some respite from the rain. Yeah, that, that isn't that isn't that so much better. I know that the rain can be uh, <sighs> quite the hazard, and it's been it's been going on for so long. I, I'm afraid that yeah. I'm more water than man right now. I'm, af I'm afraid my my tail is gonna drop off. Look at it. And I just got this like floppy soap tail. It's all gross. We must yeah. hurry with our journey. You two. There'll be plenty of time to speak. Once it is finished. Yeah. 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 Speak, speaking doesn't take any time, and uh, you know, I just start start preparing the car, you know, getting ready. I'm consulting the map. I can I can speak. I can speak for hours and hours to still get done. You can just just watch me. I, it, it appears fate has brought us together, has it not? My my orcish friend there. Yeah. And, and, and I look at him like. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a there, there's an unspoken like yeah you, you, you gotta deal with me. And I just look at yeah, you and I, mean, I just and I just nod just very politely. Just, mm, it appears so. But as a note, I do have um, I'm not uh, though I'm sort of selling the the standoffishness. Uh, I do have a very high presence as a, as a note. Uh, so it's not like I mean, my my clothing is is nice and and whatnot. It's, it's covered in rain and whatnot, but that's it. Mm. Mm. The spider's just looking at you both. That 
Kira, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going. Just you. Mm. As it sits there with it, with the map over it, this leather map, and then oh. it like, gets off a bit, and that hops off very agile for its little body. Ah, uh, it's it's fine. And you, uh, you, uh, go out there. Mm. Mm. And just looks at the him and just mm, appraising the size of it, and then. I just reach down and take the map from it. You know, it's using it as an umbrella. I just take it. It, it. it hops out of the umbrella like it was placed. Oh, it yeah. had a bit like cringe when you are like placing it. Oh, you're placing him. The suit is. But. Uh, is this card yours I'm then? I'm looking at this sprite. I'm speaking to it in. Um, uh, it's speaking in Thraxa. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yeah. This card yours then, so, beast. Uh, yeah. That is we'll mine. But we'll see to it, no damage is all done to it, while it is under my care. Yeah. Um, Your beast will doing. be properly fed. I right, like look look at a, a Kuro at that, and I look back at it. Your wares will be unsullied. Hey, see, see, boss, we can we can trust this orc. You can always always trust an orc. I'll keep an eye on him, though. I'll keep I'll keep him in line. Yeah, keep an eye. <laughs> and he, he looks smiling up at you with this small squeaky voice. You can see warmth coming from him. It can't really see the age on him, but maybe you can, being well, fey. See. If he really is fake, sometimes you doubt that. You see him in his cocoon sleeping, but well, I think I have to go now. The other, the other two are, are waiting. You understand? Be on your way. Hmm. You'll and return walks. once we are done. No, not to you. Getting inside finally. Oh, oh! It looks back. Yes. I, I, I trust you. You will, you'll do, you'll do good. Smiling up at you and then walking, and the hippo just looks at Kuro like <laughs> looking at his heart. So it sits up there. It, the ostrich is just bound to the cart. You know, once the card gets going, you know, I'll I'll look at Kuro and and I'll gesture with you know my hand. You know, of course I'm I'm wearing no I didn't. There's no uh, weaponry or anything on me. I just had a robe and just gesture with my hand towards you. I made sure that the seeds were sent. Did you receive them? I I did. I got a package. And nice little Very pouch cool. there. I suppose when uh when the Thunderbirds decide not to wipe us off face of Kavega Thale, I suppose I will uh, plant some of those. Maybe maybe get a stator to do what they they understand about plant seed. Yes, they do. That is good then. Onward. And you do thus All right. just that. And then I gesture to the human. You heard the man? Get 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 the car full up. And I just, you know, climb onto the cart and, and uh, wait for the hibbin to uh put put anything any supplies that still need to be placed upon the cart. Uh, get something up there. And then it just hops up and sighs as it moves. But still it's yeah. When it looks at you uh, up here, attacks. There's a bit of like, mm, like calm feeling. It's big eyes, but as you travel further in the rain, we go to another place where it just has been raining, but it is stopped. Maybe only days ago. This is far. Well, 
it's a long journey for you two, the other two, also the you two. You have been kept in the cart. You have been split up. The pharaoh were taken away. Any of you who spoke to Julian, the other ogres have told you, Akrova, that they wanted the prophets from the other the other pharaoh and took them back, but you are going someplace else. As you sit in the cart, you can just hear wheels squeaking, no. turning. It's not stone anymore, it's more grassland you're feeling under the cart. And you sit there, slowly well, bumping into each other. You're all bound, chained up. You are fed. But any one of you who have a scratch has not been looked at at all. Just been kept in there, taken out sometimes, but still smells foul in there with, well, six ogres and a mihanki. And the tensions are going high as these bike issues moving you to some place that's not cold anymore. Not that cold anymore. Man. Well, not know how you're feeling, but I guess we would let the floor open to you as you sit there. You're not gagged or anything. You're just bound by hands and feet as you sit in there. Very, very tight with your hands, especially on the overs. As the uh, as the cart moves back and forth, so too does Arkova begin to sway from side to side as this lumbering cart moves and lumbers and creaks. He stares somewhat vacantly around at the situation that he's in, looking at his fellow, his other fellows as they too are also bound. Mmm. And, and, uh, and Moolish, he looks around Hmm. Hello there. What do you suppose will happen to us next? Hmm. I, I don't. I don't know. They're not taking us to the to the cave I've heard told about. I, I don't know. You reckon we get sold off this time? Be put to labor, made into slave, hmm? Seems like a fate that would be bestowed upon us. Right. He looks over at the... Oh, she looks over at the Akros. He, he would, would be slave, I think. I don't know what... Slave... Are they taking us back to trade? Yeah, she just hinted over at you. Hmm. Careful, looking at these anthropophagi as they're conversating in my presence, likely quite hungry, as you might have heard from their stomachs. So my eyes are very, not darting, almost the opposite, very slowly moving from one to the next. I don't understand their uh, cruel, despicable tone. I, I do. I do watch them and and, and grimace at the smell of their bodies, at their sweats. And I, and I try to do everything I can not to sniff, finding this smell most most unappealing. But periodically, I'll stick my nose back out of the car and smell the air around me, pulling in, learning what I can from my surroundings as to what they're doing. As you do that, you get as you stick your head out of the leather bulge, you get smacked. A gauntlet, as it as she yells at you in. Well, seeing as you know what, is seeing you know, uh, more coolish. I you would you would have heard, they are keep speaking about old glory or glorious battles, and uh, uh, Orgro 
so seems like a, a war hero, maybe. They speak about him constantly. I don't have the faint thing of what these creatures are, although they smell very odd. They do. I heard the Ferrum yells some odd comments about him, but that but didn't really make much impression on me. Yeah. But as, as soon as you're trying to move your head out of there, there's a like a sitting on the back of the cart and then like smacking you. Smacking just not smack at you but smacking at the wood. Making that noise so you keep inside. I, I do. Uh, my nose does not appreciate that. No. But there's definitely no snow anymore. There is well you can probably smell grass, grasslands, small mm, hazelnut trees dotting the area. And something foul is getting closer and closer. It's, mm, it's like rotting eggs, perhaps, stale, rotten, meat yes. and a faint like mm, like mm, clay clay that's what you what you smell oh well, this this waft that is in the air uh, makes me turn my nose a bit Ugh. He'll tap against the sides of the uh, of the cart, hoping to get this, uh, this creature's attention. He'll start saying in Moolish towards it, No there! Let us breathe a bit! Silence! It says in a language you cannot understand. It looks at you with a, with a hard look as it gets the covers in front of it again. Just throwing the small eye slits of its like all nicely polished iron helmet. Hmm. He kind of just studies his face for a bit, or its face in this case, and just kind of looks it over. Hmm. The other focus look at you. We. There's just one of them there. I mean, can you stand up? I know our legs are tied together, but maybe we could do something. Oh, oh. I don't understand our tongue. That'll be the downfall. What about that one? What about that one? Oh, don't you worry. I'll have a plan. That one. And then when he look when she looks at arrows, she just stops for a moment and then um. or I begin to think that she might be planning to eat me. Yeah. And I just kinda lock my eyes on her. Hold it with a tremendous force. She She he'll look over at her and then he'll he'll say to her Oh there. You know what tongue he speaks. I don't think he knows Moolish. If not, he just ignore us then. That is rude. Hmm. Uh, what? You speak wolf tongue? Hmm? Oh. What is wolf tongue? It sounds like Sounds like singing. Like singing? Hmm. Yeah. Not like heard of singing. this. Hmm. I, the woe to me to not know a tongue that knows how to sing. Hmm. Maybe it speaks. Of, I, I heard it spoke with, uh, with the caravan leader. Spoke in the, the tongue of the satyrs. Tongue of the satyrs, you say. Mm. And uh, in Sindarian, he will turn 
towards uh, towards you, and he will say, "Lo, there, you hear me? You understand me?" Mm, yes, I certainly do. What ah. that you wish to say? And I, I seem so surprised that you can communicate. Mm. You speak language. This is good. He'll gesture to the rest of them. We're going to plan to escape from here. Hmm. I'm going to grab this one here and choke him. Put him under. Then we break three. We get out of here. Of course, I also get my stuff, as might you want to as well. Hmm. Mm. You shall show these things. I have many herbs and unguents and potions, essences from faraway lands swept by sand. It would be most unfortunate to lose them to such foul rot, metallic smelling indigents. I should uh, certainly enjoy an idea that might lead to liberation. I think they have terrible ideas swirling in their mind. I smell it. I said body. They are planning some hideous demise for freedom. So I will hear your plan well now. I do not know what you are called, uh, musician. Ah, yes, of course. How rude of me. I am Arkova. Arkova. I do not know the meaning of such a name, but I was named by my parents, Eros Adonis. I am... Well, less than pleased to make any of your acquaintances. So much more under such circumstances. Still, the idea of working in tandem does provide interest to me. My good. Good, good. Well. Do you think they'll care that you're choking this one here? Oh, I'm sure they will, and they will come, and when they do, I will come at them, and they will find themselves met with me and the rest of my brethren, as well as you, and we shall overtake them, all of them. Perhaps we should undo our bindings first, before we apply such practice. Uh, what kind of bindings do we Smell? have on us? Oh, it, it's it's iron. Yeah. Oh, wait. He, he yeah. lifts up. He lifts up the irons. He begins like. Uh, not, Good iron. Uh, not easy to undo. And the the smell just from outside just keep getting worse and worse. It's it's near. It's overpowering the stench of this cart. And you yeah, get there. There have been five ochres in it for. Chains, so that's. You have to remember, I, I have a superb sense of smell. This makes us like a living hell to me. Yeah. I can, I, I believe, not bear this confined any longer. It is, I think, driving me to madness. Yes, let us put upon them. I speak the cracking tongue of the flame that flies high. I'll burn them with ember-scented flame words to lure them here as you do your deed upon this one. Yes, upon that neck. Oh, yes, I believe you would show that neck well. So very well. Well then, I believe there is no time better than now before we are all overpowered with something. Linger in the fast of flesh and deny our rightful sensory senses. I believe I cannot abide any longer. As I talk, my fangs 
Yeah. Very visible. The card is slightly moving in, in a slightly tilted angle about now. As it moves and then it moves slower. It's moving slower and slower. You can feel it. Still moving. You can hear the bikers speaking to each other in the tongue of Tuhul outside. It seems they're not. They seem excited about something. Um, and the guy sitting at the back, for you to not cast yourself out of the cart, is not sighing so much anymore. But being rather quiet. Oh, he'll tap on the side, he'll tap on the back cart again to get his attention. Um. Ah. Oh. And you 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 do he mm. quiet he says and you know you this word has been shouted along many times to you, so you probably by now know its meaning, or you can guess so far as to what it is. And then the oh. card stands still. Mm. And he jumps uh, off, you can hear him. He, he'll actually try to peer out, uh, if he can, to get a look at the situation around, and also to get some you know, fresh air. Oh, the air is definitely not fresh outside. Oh, you can look oh. On <laughs> You can look at Roll 30, I put some pictures up on your eye. I believe I found out how to do it. There's a a lake there. It's all all of the it's red. It's very it's highly reflective surface. And there's like a line of just nothingness around it. It's all black and white filled with well, must be yeah, you wouldn't know, but it's mi minerals, salt, just and calcified. You can see a calcified bat as you see on it, just laying there being washed up by to the shore and yeah this is what you see and uh, of course to you and uh, it smells horrible out yeah. here it's, it's yeah the, you have getting a bit used to the smell of ogres and this is just yeah oh, it's, it's not it. as it, the, 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 the water it's highly reflective but there's like a mist above it and you can't see the whole way through, as you can see here, to the other side. You can see a slight uprise in the middle of the lake, or maybe it's just the end of the lake. Must move our plan. Must be free. Not take this imprisonment any longer. Hmm. I agree. And then this time he'll uh, he'll start jostling the bars a bit on the back. And you see the 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 guy with the like really just yeah oiled face, just not oiled face but oiled or iron uh, helmet just open opens the 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 binders and oh, the leather. I guess yeah. Tapestry is just moving it and looking at you with like a hard gaze through the eye, eye holes. Well, as he looks at me with a hot gaze, I look at him with a, a gleeful one as I reach my arms out around him behind his head and slam him up against the bar. And if that doesn't do it, again and again and again. <laughs> Roll me an attack. <laughs> he's not. He's yeah. He's he's close. You could probably get his his arm more than you can get his. Whole body, but let's see how well you roll. That's a seventeen. Yeah, yeah, you, you get at least at uh, least get is his his arm between your uh, his head is probably too far away for you to get it. Oh, I say, got him by the arm, and I look I look towards the other side. No. He's like, huh? Now is the time. Hey, hey! And uh, he's yelling and, and screaming at you. 
I want to tell you what I try to do is pull the arm in. I, I open my mouth. I let the fang show. Opening it, it'd be like a mouth open way more than humans do. And my eyes are, are very feral, just horrifying, like a thing of a nightmare. And I lunge forward, seeing his arm about to just just bite into it. I I catch that smell of it. And I, <laughs> and I just vomit right on the, the, the Vigish's arm. And I, 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 I recoil backwards. I'm definitely not being able to, to, to bite this loathsome thing and have that taste in my mouth. It is just beyond disgusting. I fall back, growing in my stomach. Yeah, as the, the other, as the guy is, is, is horrified more than most, uh, yeah. Vigish has been his one of his arms broken, the other one is just filled with vomit from a Vihagi and he Yeah. But he he's put his as you're still putting his arm, you he put his one uh, he put his one foot on the car trying to use that as leverage to just get away as fast as possible. And you can hear the other ones are just jostling about in their Yeah. Leather high leather armor and male armor which is like it's clattering a bit as they're trying to get to aid their, well, friend. I, I look towards my other fellow ogres and I say in Moolish, Come now. Let us break his arm. Let us take all that he has and let us free ourselves. I will not stand this any longer. Our friend here will not stand this any longer. Look upon him. The foulness of this creature has put him under. Oh, surely this thing must be put down. Yes! And yeah, you 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 have to spatch him, but uh, yeah, you, you did that for. Uh, still got this scene where someone's trying to get and bite his arm. Well, and soon as you're trying to ripping off like parts of leather of his thing. Getting, uh, getting his uh, his bolos off him, but still, you're still all just bang together. I, he doesn't have keys on him, and soon you have you see uh, armbrists, like people with um, crossbows, just pointing at you from it from far away, as <laughs> far as where you can, and they. Well, I guess in that case, when I see the crossbows pointed, um, I, he just kind of lets go at that point. But he, he sits down in the center where everyone else is uh, on off onto the sides. He just sits down in the center, kind of just waiting. He's in a crouched position at this point. All your like feet I, are tied together. Just oh, okay. Well, in that case, he'll just sit back. Yeah, but you have, like, you have like, um, oh, what would that be? Like four feet between you. Hmm. Something like that. And then one says to you, and Moolish. That guy didn't speak Moolish, I guess that was his fault. But you will do something. Get out of there. I'll shoot you in the shoulder. Or maybe someplace you don't need. I will have. Go there. I shall get out. I will have you dig in that, and he points to the lake. You're not. We'll we looking for anything, bones, armor, anything you can find. And if you try to run off, all of you, I'll shoot you. And you will throw the bones to us as you dig them out of the lake. Hard to dig Understand? with bindings on. He'll just hold up his shackles. It's hard to dig with such bindings. Mm. My heart sinks heavily deep inside me and begins to beat less as I feel my own inner flame extinguishing under this oppressive tyranny it shapes me. Just fury of flaming storm begins to uh, erupt inside me like I've never felt before as I'm narrowing my eyes staring out at these prisoners, slavers. Just 
he points, as you begin growling, he points his crossbow at you. You go out first. Wolf. He says to you in still moolish. Yeah, I mean, I can't. Re I certainly can't respond to that. No, no he just looks and looks at you. His well, helmet is off, slowly showing his gaunt features, his orange hair, just in in lines, just sticking to his face. Uh, Arkova will will look upon you and say, "Hmm, he says he wants you." Out first. My mouth showing my fangs. I kind of snap the. Uh, uh, they're, 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 they're steel, these. Um... No, no, they're iron. They're iron. Oh, okay. No. There's... There's, there's something you might want to know about me and iron. My, as, as, as I snap them, you see my, my, they kind of slide down slightly in my wrist. The skin there is like gone. It's nothing but raw, like red, and there's blood that's dried and caked inside them. It looks like, uh, it looks worse than a burn. Like someone has just ripped away all the flesh under them. It's just all skinned back and matted and pushed up and dried against the iron. I slowly move out, my eyes locked on his as the flaming fury begins to storm inside me. I see the audacity of this thing to do such to me. And I get up, or, or try to, as it's attempting to seem to be wanting me to do. Yeah, the other ogres are hanging. You are on one end, and uh, Arkova is on the other end of this line of ogres, slowly leading you, getting you out. And he has one of his other men throw you some shovels at your feet, still away, away from the ogres, as... They know. What, what they, they look at look at their friend a bit, like her. What is the shovel made of? His arm. What? What is the shovel made of? It's wood, and the hand and the spade is, it's iron, but the handle is wood. I, I just I just stare down and then look back at them. I don't even try to pick it up. My arms tremble. Now under the pain of these shackles, I I notice the blood and the and the fact that the flesh has been taken off his wrists, and I I look to him and I look to the others and I say out in Mulus, "Lo there, you see his wrists. Look what you've done. Look at him. Hmm. You are cruel things. Want me to dig? Hmm. Want to take these bindings off? Easier to dig that way." He just looks at you with like a really death stare. You dig now. And he looks as one of his friends, he's like loading a crossbow. Mm. He grabs the shovel, he looks to the others, kind of gives a nod, and, and as they shuffle over, he'll, he'll turn to, to each of them and kind of whisper and, and, and moolish out of their earshot, don't worry. When time is right, we fall upon them, like boulders from the mountainside. We will crash upon them, and they will be crushed, and we will take all that is theirs and be free. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! He just laughs that one out loud. You see him, like, look at one of his men, and the other one, is, he's, like, taking aim at you, slowly. I take the shovel and I kind of just lap it over my, my shoulder. As, and I just, you can only like do it. Yeah, I, I just this is like is this you know off to work sort of thing. Just. And they yeah you you're all dragged with him I guess. 
Yeah, you still. Uh, yeah, you still don't want to pick one up. They most of the others pick one up, but they just. That guy just looks at you with contempt in his eyes, but he doesn't say anything. As you are getting dragged out in the lake with the others, and the when when you first when Akroa when the the water hits you, it feels like it's like a a slight burning sensation. It's oh. like it's, it's tingling a bit. You can see slowly that your the the red in your skin is like it's slowly getting. It's it, it, it yeah changing color, getting brighter as you stand out there for a bit. Oh, but what is this? Very very slowly. Oh, he just lifts his feet out each time. And he just looks and he. Oh. It, it's it's a very slow process and it gradually mm. gets slower, but it it they're getting well pink. He'll, he'll he'll look to the others and he'll just say to them in, in a whispered tone, uh, "Work slowly. We'll take as much time as we need, and when the time is right, mm, then we fall upon them. Um, Blasted, noseless I've bastards." Yet, I've still yet to pick the shovel up at all. I'm just kind of looking down at it. Uh, I seem kind of afraid of it. Yeah, they're Feel not like saying anything, but you are getting you are in a line, all of you. So you are getting dragged by the last ogre. If you don't start moving, because if a chroma is moving, then all of you are moving. Oh, well, the others could stop, but they're not stopping. They sort of they picked things up, and 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 you can tell with your good nose that the smell is coming from the lake. There's something. Something wrong with this lake. It's not just, yeah, water. And you can just see this. Can you give me a, a little bit more candle. about candle? What? What did you say about a candle? No, it, it's just, in you knowing about candles, you know about crystallization of minerals a bit. Yeah. And you can see yeah. that just on the beach of this lake. Just small, little, tiny. It's just, it's, they're bigger than like if you know sea salt, like sea salt, just uh, yep. scattered in some places so, yeah. where they could sit on rocks. Right. So but most what of it looks the, like. Most of the, what? The wounds, the wounds I have on my wrist are probably going to get horrendously burned when I go in here. Is what you're telling me? Oh yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. Um, uh, I just, that's what you're I guessing as you stand disgusted. just on the edge. Full of fear. Uh, I, I, uh, I look at the, the shovel and I look at these ogres and I, 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 I just can't, I can't tolerate any of this. But the last ogre behind you, he looks at you and then not and start digging closer to the shoreline so you can stay off the off the the lake. And you all well arrows and the other orcas keep digging and well the the lake is not that deep per se. It goes to like about a little bit of off angles and you, sure enough, under the lake begins finding bones and, well, scrap goods of metal, but bones is what they seem me most pleased about when you throw it up there. Do they look oh, like bones? No, no, scratch, no, 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 What? No, no scraps. Uh, that, that, like no, no, no bones. Only, only metal scraps. No, no bones now. To be honest. But sorry. Red what kind of metal is? What kind what? of metal is this? What kind of metal is this? Um, it's undiscernible. It's so it's been it water iron? on the way. Perhaps you're not. Sorry, I don't. I don't believe you're touching it. As you're standing off offshore, there was an ogre who let you be offshore so he could dig. And they're not saying anything to you as they're just pointing at the other ogres as they're working. 
maybe getting a bit free when you're bleeding as you are with vomit down your neck. But you work there perhaps some hours. You see the Vikishes are calming down, they're sitting. One of them is still looking at you, but the others are making camp and making ready for something, looking through the metal, keeping away from you, but you are just working in the in the sun of well, in our master's life, but it's not warm here. And we see another cart slowly trailing on the same trail. And because it has rained, you can see there's been another but another cart with another strange beast of burden. It has like very large feet, but it doesn't sink so deep in the mud. As you other two are there, you are alone by now. The hippon has got off by its house or his house. But I assume you have that. some means to defend yourself with Boundaries outside Flam Dance can be mm, difficult. I look, uh, look down at you, assumingly that you would have some money on. Mm. Sure, sure. I got a, and, and and I like you know I've got like a traveling side, and yeah, got a little something here. Nah, it's, it's a little copper, like it's it's just it's it's really a, a knife that's more for for cooking or in and eating with. Got this here. I see. What are your sense of the direction? Are we following the map's coordinations correctly? Of course, of course. Here are we, and you know, and I'm, and I'm pointing to the map. I, I can always find the, my way through the wilderness. It's something that I've I've picked up from a from a young age. I think I think it might be innate, inborn to the Kitsune people. We we're natural wanderers. You understand? We our souls need to be free. We need to walk the world and feel it under our feet and seek out our fortunes and our <laughs> our misfortunes as sometimes sneak up upon us. But Yes, yeah, this this is north, and, and I'm pointing, and and if he does look to the sun and maybe triangulate that, then it's this is you know quite quite correct, uh, as I assume an, or, an orc might have some some outdoorsman as well. I'm just watching you. I'm just watching you, and mm -hmm. almost politely nodding when you say things. Like, mm. And and as we're moving, I, I start explaining things like the the sun. You see, it moves. In this direction, you can, if you look here, and you can tell the shadows by the time of the day, what what direction we're heading. And you know, my, my voice just drones. I, I like I've just been speaking. I'm, I'm sure much to um, Apitax's chagrin. I've been speaking like this whole time, just like talking about like, ah, see there. Now, now it's, that's called a it's called a Hibbins mushroom. I, I don't know why they call it that because it's it's not blue at all. It doesn't have feathers, but it's called a Hibbins mushroom and. If you eat one, you'll you'll die instantly, and anything but a hibbin can't eat it. I suppose that's why they call that there. And you know, I've just, just been just laughing about now just then. it's pretty much just been an, yeah, it's been an endless tirade of like extolling my my virtues as as an expert on on this situation. And uh, how long has this trip been? Has it been like two days? No. No, 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 no. This has been like nearly two chains. Oh. <laughs> okay. And it has been it has been raining until no, like there. perhaps yes, perhaps like two days ago it stopped raining. So yeah. Just then yeah, yeah. Then <laughs> at, if it was that long, you would know my name. I would have you know eventually. Uh, it takes a while, but you know I, I would simply say Apatox. You know, you call me that. I wouldn't give you the full name. You know, um, but uh, whereas you are a bit more. Uh, talkative and, and a bit more, you know, I'm just a bit more just reserved and 
now and then I'll make like this familiar, uh, which will become familiar to you, this deep throaty sort of mm, kind of noise of disapproval, you know, if you're annoying me or if you're talking too much or whatever. You, know, you hear me kind of mm, loud gesture with my hand like, all right, calm down. <laughs> Now, now I can I can make you some some tea from these leaves here. I hear you're always going. Mm, mm, mm. Seemingly every I would say 15 seconds or so, you make this noise. It's this, I think, sort of a throat or a, a lung infection. There, it's not going to do you any good if if we get to our destination and you're knocking on the, the door of death. I'm fine. There's mm, plenty. You're making of that noise every 15 seconds. I'm telling you. I will try to refrain from bothering you with my noise. Uh, no, no, no bother me. I'm, I'm just, I'm looking out for the health and the welfare of my traveling companion. Mm. Out here, out here in the wilderness, we don't have anything but each other. We got How much longer watch do each we other have? Backs. Oh, I would say uh, a few days more. Depending on the the pace in which we go, I've been I've been trying to get this thing to go at a better pace, and I'm like poking at it with a staff. Is it, this is the action of someone no, who has no animal like, handling? I'm just uh, with a just a tongue just out at you and just looks at you and this. Well, and and you all of you have also been smelling this foul smell, mm-hmm. and you just getting closer and closer to something, and you see in in the not in in the far distance, but you see like. There's a bit of a drop, and then you can see like a bit of a, a mist around this little drop, it seems. I don't think it like, is wise to poke the beast. Let's not get on its bad side. Oh, no. It is a it is a dim and dutiful thing. I, I tried to tie some of these greens here to a stick hold it out in front of its beak, uh, but it's too its too dim to even notice that, and it just kept plodding along in its own pace. I don't know. I suppose the Hibben have some sort of connection with this beast, and I, being a thing of fur and not feathers, uh, it does not understand my ways. Nor do I suppose it would uh, understand your ways. Might even might even try, try and peck at you. You look so, so delicious there, so green. Uh, that's what I've been seeing. It's been eating. And all these greens from Gashal. Gonna, at gonna least make a snack out of you. Well. And, and I'm poking at him. I mean, I'm like barely ca- casual in speaking. Um, I, I mean, maybe like now and then I'll catch you like kind of cringing your nose, crinkling your nose from the smell, but I'll just look at you. And like, but there's like, you know, a quite obvious sort of detached like look. Just not really a yeah. compassionate yeah. look towards you, just like. That is definitely something uh, my Kitsune knows. P- picked that up, this strange smell up long ago. Ah, this scent here—it's it's something natural. I've I've smelled it before in my travels, but I forget exactly what it was. It's oof. What do you smell? I think it's befouled. It's befouled water. I smelled it once before. Oof. I see. In the in the deserts of ash, there's these places like this. You, can't escape it. Just fill with salt. Salt from ancient times when they... And th- now now I'm like drifting off. Like th- this is also something that seems to happen. Like just insane rambling. Like the eyes get a thousand meter stare. And they try to kill things. Things from the lakes. In those times when they whispered blasphemous things into the ears of those who would Dying to listen, told them secrets. Se- uh. Anyway, we're we're almost there. We're almost there. You know, I just quiet down. Like whenever you start going to rambling, there's not. Of course, inside my head, you know, I'm like, oh, all right, well, of course, we're like inside my head, I know uh, much more than I'm letting on. Like, oh, yeah. Like I could totally read the map. I'm just I already know that we're quite close, and uh, what you know what he's saying, just just nodding. Uh, 
and you you could hear something down there. Yeah, a bit of splashing and well, activity. As you are moving closer to the lake, you can see the tracks I described before. These. Look, uh, yeah. We ain't the only ones in these parts. Oop. And I and I hop I hop off of the the cart and I start looking at the tracks. Just uh, give me a moment here. Or you can follow if you wish. If you are one of of soft feet. And swift movements, and I and I look doubtfully at the orc, but I just arc I, I begin to creep forward the reins and like hold them. And I just sit there. I the for you to go off. Look, look back at you. Just look back, back at you, and then looks at him. And then when when he it, it when Kuro slowly moves away, it's like it's like it heads goes down a bit, and it seems more relaxed. And, maybe and I just sit there slightly. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a very calm. Can't be it's very very easy to move. Then. Yeah. Don't but I don't I don't like that. Whip I don't move or anything. I just watch them. No. And you, crew, move closer to the the edge. I'm sure you should roll a uh, move silently roll by now. Sure. Let's see, rolling for them. Oh. <laughs> oh well, I was uh, so I'm just stepping on soft moss or something this whole time with the 29. Soft. But you are slowly walking there, just crouched down using the hill, and you can see this camp being set up. See these gaunt, yellow-faced creatures. Some of them with black hair. One of them with orange, pointing at some red creatures, digging in this. Well, very quiet, quiet lake. Except the ochres splashing around, digging up metal pieces, throwing them off on the shore. You can see one of the one with orange hair pointing. A crossbow at the orcs. No, no, at the ogres. And you see uh, yeah, something else standing close to the ogres. Hmm. Well, this. As soon as I see this, my 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 breath catches in my throat. My heart skips a beat, and and suddenly I'm not in the in the rain-soaked and 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 mud-drenched forest anymore. Or no, I'm in. I'm in a frozen tundra, and and I'm I'm running. I'm holding my side. Blood is drenching down. It is is dripping down my leg. Crimson is meeting the white frost that my my feet scamper across. I see uh, a frozen forest up ahead. I run in there. I look over my shoulder. Pursuers, shadowy. Uh, they're in a in a blizzard. I cannot see who they are, uh, but I hear it. Shouts in Morghulish. Shouts in Tehulian. Men wearing steel follow me <sighs> deeper into the forest. Then I see a shape up ahead, four feet, a great white wolf. It snarls. It bares its teeth. I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. I then look upon the face of the, uh, the, the red-haired one down there. I feel that terror once again. It has come for me. And and I, I I leave from my hiding place. I head back to my orchid compatriot. I am in fact holding side. The the, the memory of this is is so strong. I I, I feel like I'm physically I'm actually limping over. Um, if if I've ever if I if I went out of sight, it would be a natural assumption that I I have been wounded on on this trek. <sighs> I, I saw him. There's something going down there by the lake. Yeah. The, the steel ones, the the Vigish. Uh, they've captured, they've captured Ogus. They've captured the. I don't know what they're called. The they've captured an Olin Manslayer. That's what they're called. I look down at you, 
And there, there's like no real compassion, no discernible compassion. I'm just going to look down. And, uh, and I look, I'm look. i looking like if you actually do have any wounds, and I see there's no I nod. So I'm just holding my side. Maybe it's maybe it's hiding something. Who knows? Uh, They're too far. They, if we continue, if we continue, they'll they'll surely see us. But I don't know. I don't know what they'll do to those people. There's there's nothing but cruelty in the hearts of those men. There's nothing but horror. I've seen what they can do. Both sides. I know I'm not who will come out. Uh, I know not who will come out on top on this one. Oh, and I, and I crawl into the cart and just kind of like flop over like like there's an arrow in me or something, but there's no blood. I like watch you as you get in and then I awkwardly try to, um, like with the reins in hand, I try to like make, make try to get the thing to turn uh, away. <laughs> and turn away from this. Um, away from this. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it does. It just looks at you with those big eyes and then moves I will with you. Move the cart perhaps several miles away from this location where may, we may set up camp. Perhaps they will be here only for the few passing days. Either way, I don't know. no vision. You are um, um, perhaps yield better eyesight than I. Best we keep watch during the night. Uh, that sounds fine. I will. I would not be able to sleep, not with them out there. Not with them. I will look for a place to hide our cart the best we can for some shrubbery, bush, uh, a, a tree. I mean, say a little like trying to find the words of these things. Or is an orc would or perhaps know the specific type of trees and whatnot. Just a stone, a tree. Look for something here. There. We'll make a way to that ridge. The only, that only trees out here are hazelnut trees, which are yeah, well, kind of like bushes. So mm -hmm. it's probably hard if you don't have any outdoorsmen to know really what it is. But, but there's not a lot of vegetation close to the lake. You find the hazelnut bushes. You know, I'll try to park the cart. You know, there. Um, I I am trying to get the cart maybe about like two miles away, uh, maybe a mile and a half to a, two miles away from this location, um, and, and trying to basically hide it uh, the best I can. Um, that's that's what I do. You can. I don't think you have to roll there. Well, ah, let's do it anyway. Ah, you you find a, a place where you can hide the uh, hide your your car. It's not that big. It's mostly mostly for well, two perhaps three persons. If the person's small, like uh, well, anyone but you who's been on it. And uh, the ostrich is uh, just laying down, slumping to. Like a chicken wood sitting. You know, and I, and I, that long I get off of it, you know, and I, or almost m like mechanically, you know, I get, I get off of it, like I'm making the motions, and I, I make sure, you know, I, I put like a, uh, whatever, like a leather pouch, whatever seeds or whatnot we, we use to feed the thing. And I, and I, and I set that by it, like, I gesture to you, look inside the card for a cloth, black, brown, something you, uh, help. Yeah, yeah, something, something not too flashy. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, I should Wolfram say the ostrich like is not colored like an ostrich. It's colored. It's just it don't have the the white patches. It's just it's just all all black. But it has like the neck is really a red color, mm -hmm. striking out a bit, and the beak is also red. 
But, uh, I mean, having no idea how this thing, like, sleeps. Well, I mean, I guess two chains worth of travel. I mean, uh, how does Asha just, like, sit down and, like, or does it, like, sleep standing Yeah, up? it totally sits, it sits down like a, a chicken would, and then just yeah. lays his head down, but hasn't, it hasn't put his head down, just sat down when you mm -hmm. got off the cart, knowing the drill, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I do my best uh, with determination in my mind. Um, I will not fail my mentor in this, in this endeavor. Um, and uh, doing my best to sort of make attempts to hide this camp uh, as I can just by putting darker, like, non-flashy things on it. Um, my robe that I'm wearing, you know, I'll, I take that off, you know, I, I, I try to put that on, like, one side of the card. Um, I just wear sort of a brown robe. And under that, you know, I, I have, like, a tunic robe sort of tunic with a nice sort of satch uh, around the waist. But I don't have, uh, I don't wear shoes. as is a orcs custom. Yeah. There are some <laughs> like little small leather pouches, you know, like little, little pieces of copper uh, rings connected to the belt, my belt and whatnot. I I had a very small leather um, bag that was slung over my shoulder, but that's in the cart, and I haven't really opened that up or anything like that. Um, that just just haven't had a reason to do that. Well, you know, uh, I have no idea how to start a fire. Um, I mean, I, I know it takes wood or something, uh, so I just work off some twigs, and, <laughs> and I'm just looking yeah, at these I, twigs, and I'm looking at you, like, expecting you to do something. I'm sure, you know, t two chains ago, we, you know, I, I, I like, looking at you expectantly, like, eh, yeah, ma ma make a fire, make a fire, or and then, <laughs> you know, without that, um, I am able to, you know, like, clumsily sort of uh, do a... Uh, a flint, flint and tinder. Like, eh, eh, eh. It it takes it takes a while, but I've you know I've been able to make the fires when, whenever we camp, and this time, you know I'm sort of reluctantly, you know like tr trying to set it. Ah, should should we be making a fire here with those with those things out there? The the vagish they'll, they'll capture a man and put him in chains and. Never see him again. I saw ogres, and well, you know what ogres do. And I saw, I saw another one, a strange one. I, I've seen them before. He was, he was like one of the howling manslayers. He was like, like one of the Mihongi, one of my cousins. But this one was different. He was, he was colored like blood, blood. Red hair, but not not red hair like you'll see on a one of my folk or one of the the satyrs. It's different. One of those. One of those Mihongi. I don't know what you would call this one. I'm just gonna call him that. They saved my life once, when I was pursued, and and I, I looked to my side as if I to think I would see a wound again. There's there's nothing. I, I look confused by that. Yeah. I see. Niflin. The snow swirled all around. Vagish behind me. There was a wolf in front of me. They came out of the snow without a sound. Descended upon the men of steel. They cared not for me. I, I ran and I hid. It was all I could do. Oh, Apotex. On that day I saw... Teeth went out over steel armor. I saw unarmed men drag down armed warriors and open their throats, pull limbs off of them, screaming as they did so. And they just howled. They just howled the whole time. Mm. And in those howls, there was, there was laughter. 
pull them apart. I could see why you would seek entry near orcish lands. Yeah. Orcs, orcs don't do any of that, I can tell you. That is correct. I enjoy your, your calm, the calm of your people. Yes. It is a shame that you had not picked up any of orcish meditations. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let's not get too excited about that. I, I enjoy your serenity, but at times it seems like you have planted roots in the ground and decided to uh, simply stare at the sun and hope you grow into a tree. No, no, that's, that's no lie for me. Like I said, our people got to wander. We need to see the world. Yes. See the world. We all keep the fire low. Need warmth. Need to see. Yeah. Rain's made it a bit too, a bit too chilly. And I, I pull my traveling clothes around myself. I make that low fire. I pile up rocks and, and detritus like around it, so that it will block that view a bit from from the lake where where I saw the the creatures. And I quickly lose my sense of like direction where well, I know that we're just far away and I just see you doing that. I, just, I don't say anything, but I'm a, I look at you and I nod in approval. A rare look of approval that I give you. But um, as a note also for you, you, you would have catched me uh, with uh, almost little, perhaps little writings, little scrolls of leather, burnt burnt into leather, these, these weird sort of symbols on them. But uh, I am a learned, a learned man, that is, that, it, that does become apparent to you. Yes, we go to another sort of, well, camp. Let's call it that. As you are being getting gestured off of the, the the lake, all of you you have been sitting by it, arrows watching the ochres work for you as you sit there. They don't seem to be bothered much, as they yeah. Mostly when, when a, a, a male ogre would look at you and, and groan a little bit too high, one of the, one of the females, there's two females, would been been saying something harsh, it seems, to him, and he would just have continued to, well, dig. You have a small pile of, well, what seems to you as metal rubbish, and if you're not having grades in, I don't believe you have grades in blacksmith, but it's it's basically it's rubble, old, very old armor, and yeah, sharp, long pieces of metal, all rusted and decolored. But you are getting shown into the the cart again. They want you to to sleep in there, getting a little bit of shelter of the cold. But so does it actually smell worse out here now that I'm out here for a little while, or inside that over oh, dung heat? Uh, the, the dung heat is probably better. Oh, no, that's considering like <sighs> like uh, if you like, <laughs> yeah. Sulfuric acid, rotten egg smell, just that, just get that headache, just pounding, and that, well, more earthy smell is probably, yeah, that well, doesn't hesitate that headache. It has to, it has to be outside here. The, the Vikings don't seem at all to complain about this in, uh, in you. In any of the language, well, 
more ghoulish as you understand. They, yeah, don't seem to be bothered about this. You can perhaps write it off to the fact that they don't have noses, but, but perhaps not. Uh, Arkova, as uh, as they're all being shuffled there. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's two guys with war spears just poking at you. As, as they tried to, I I look back and I I have this. No, 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 not there, not. Yeah. Well, I, I I get this look of like fatigue on my face, and all of a sudden he just collapses to his knees and just falls onto the ground face first. I, I look over towards you. Uh... I'm going to try to feign as best I can shock and confusion and surprise. I do have guile. You could roll guile all of you if you have it. All right. There we go. Let's, that would be... let's do it. Okay. Uh, you, but uh, if, as you're, you're rolling, just see. One roll of them. Oh, God. That's I was a I was well, 19. Uh, so that there's, this, um, there's this smell certainly better of, of like cooking meat that that makes it slightly more pleasant but uh, let's see how uh, well you uh, yeah as uh, he they was the, like look at you you are in the front of the line and they like manure around the ogres not really wanting to get close to them and the other ogres is looking over you and then just looking and then gathering a bit around you, I stay looking at them. There's one of them like, bike is like pokes you with a spear. I and then when I, you're not reacting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, you 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 maybe yeah. He's poking you with a spear right now. As the two of them are just standing there, just with, con with concerned faces, like. Hmm. He'll he will actually go a step further, and he will bite his lip and let the red blood begin to pour down from there onto the ground. Uh, uh, uh. And they, like, <laughs> look look over at the, the other one standing with the crossbow. And he falls I lick my lips over like, there. As I smell that oh, amazing aroma of blood. As it fills the air with finally a decent scent. And he like bends over over. He he he's still far away. He's just behind the one with the war spears, and he looks at you. Uh, you have to give them. You want food? Looks at the others. Can you carry him in? Drag him in? And they're like, okay. <laughs> They're holding their arms up like, mm. <laughs> like but not really and he's like looking looking at them with like his furred brow just can can sleep out here. And then one of them is just one of them with a spear just stops poking you. They're not jabbing to stop and then stand there for a while and then he looks at them go go get them something. And then they come with cauldrons of like hot meat. It's just meat in, in basically boiled in water till there's like only the threads of like the meat nearly not sticking together like a soup. Just threads of meat. It's not particularly scented or anything. It's just there basically. Uh, how close? Oh, how, clo how close are they to me now? Are they? Uh... There's there's one uh, there's one with like who's walking towards you like there's a crossbow towards the others but there's one walking close to you with like a cauldron of like food in his hands just slowly walking just towards them. Uh, now does this cauldron look hot? Is there like steam coming off of it and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's it seems. Yeah, it's it's just been on the fire. You've seen it, but he's still holding it like it was nothing. Like it's not hot mm. at all. Mm. Uh, like a big cauldron. It uh, smells when, good. Mm. But, 
war, getting warm meat is uh, suddenly something you have missed. I can only imagine. Oh, uh, his his stomach is growling, and uh, he is right now assessing the situation in his mind's eye to try to figure out what else he could do at this moment. And uh, seeing as how he he wants to be free to get out of these shackles as soon as possible, um, he is going to wait for one of them to get close to his feet. And when they do, he is going to uh, is going to grab them and strip them. Okay, this is the guy with the cauldron with the food in it. Just so you know, he's walking over to you with with the food. But he's uh, yeah, he's like in arm's reach, perhaps not assessing the reach of an ogre. So he's like ready to. He's like placing it down. But you can roll. You can roll, of course. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna let's go go ahead and get so at him. One two. No, getting you free, man. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So what happens is he leans over, and, and and nervously he's get, he's getting the food out. It's like you can hear the slurping noises of it as he's like stirring it up. And as he leans in closer, that's when my eyes bolt wide open, and he just almost like a cat jumps up, and his hands are still shackled together, and he gets his wide looking grin in his eye, and just grabs him, and just throws him right down onto the ground, oh. and then he shouts to the others in Moolish. Brothers and sisters, fight! Ah! And then he just begins to pound him over and over again. And, I stand uh, there and yeah. with a stunned shock look on my face at the absurd violence of the big red man. Uh, I just sort of like zone out slightly, uh, kind of move my head, and then very slowly react to uh, to add violence. On my own variety. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. You will take uh, one. Uh, you have to give me one defense roll as this guy is trying to get you with that crossbow as he was pointing towards the other, but he's it's loaded and everything. So, um, okay, it's eighteen for him. Yours uh, he, is... he, he's he's got me. Yeah, yeah. You take. Um, it's four, and I don't believe you have any armor on it, right? Nope. Ain't no armor. Yep. You take four damage as a you can you can describe as a, this bolt. It's it's very close close range as he's mm. quickly well, moving. And well, as as I am delivering my fury onto this fool Vigas who had gotten too close to my guy, uh, the other one is more quick witted and begins to fire his bolt. And as he does, the bolt just shimmers right through the air, and all I see is just a it's just a uh, a mere black shadow in the night, this quick dart that volts at me and then hits me right in the shoulders, piercing my muscles and flesh and sticking right in as the blood begins to, to pour out of the hot, sweaty body of my own. It's like... And reaction rolls as... Uh... That's a, a ten for me. You, Eros. No, oh, I have one right in the comments, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. you have to, uh, uh, Akroa, you have to give me two more defense rolls as uh, the guy with the war spear. Well, there are two of the guy, two guys with the war spear, so. Three defense rolls. No, where he's still loading. No, that only takes a move action, so three. Yeah. And I have 13. And I have 11. And I have 14. As two of them are... The first two of them are war spears. As they're moving. Oh, well. The guy with the crossbow is still a bit far, a bit away. From the crowd, as the other, they're jamming you, but closely on their feet, wanting to get away from the other ogres as they are, well, trying to get in on the action. Are you? What are your? Okay, the the first fence roll is a uh, thirteen, and the second one is a fourteen, 
And the third is a uh, five. Okay, the the guy with the crossbow gets you again. The other two, well, you can describe it. You get hit by the crossbow, and the two spears are not hitting you. Oh, all right. So as the two spearmen come in, uh, I, he begins to take his. Even though his hands are bound, he uses them as uh, as almost like shields. As as when they strike forward. He swings them around and bats them away and then bats the other one away as if he was wielding a sword, but it's just his raw forearms and shackles as he continues to pound away on the fool beneath him. But the bolt, again, that shadowy dart in the night, stabbing him once more in the shoulder on the right side this time. Now he was looking much like a red pinata. Uh... They're, they're, they're moving away, and the other ogres are, well, they're other than you to react, but I guess they'll try to get at one of them. I see the one closer to you would be in reach. Oh, ah, oh, he doesn't get him. The guy with the spear is just, he's trying to get at the spear, this ogre, and he just nearly gets it, but then the other man just takes a step back. And then the orange head one says, now, let go of him as he's, like, loading another one. But uh, uh, it is uh, your turn, uh, Eros. You are on the other hand, so you are the one with the more movement than the other uh, ogres. All right. So they have to every one of their sides. I'm going to run just straight out at one of these things. Like, I, I've been... I've been slightly maddened by the experience. Uh, this has been too much. The old factory stimulation is, is driving me to the point of, of, of certainly desiring to commit homicide on these things. <clears throat> and uh, I don't believe I'm going to succeed there. But I'm going to have uh, four, two, uh, a whopping eight. Is I, I'm going to run at one of them trying to charge them and just try to to utilize. All right, so basically what happens is I'm run at him with, with the iron, and it's just ripping and grating at my flesh as if it's itself a continuous acidic burn against my very skin, and the pain just consuming me deep down in my very essence, my soul itself, as I run towards him, ah, just wincing, making enough sound, where the virus turns to me, and, and, and as I come at him, he starts grabbing uh, the chain to fight back, and we're fighting it. It's just ripping at my oh! Oh! I have any pain. The burning comes over me. Do you have any great and sing? I must ask you as you howl into the night. No, definitely not. Well, it doesn't travel that far, but it's there, and all the other Vikings men are like getting their stuff as they're. Just they see there's another culture just falling, and just some of the like, some of the tent is like falling down as they're frantically trying to get their weapon, not realizing that their slaves could be this well lively after a day of work and being in a cart for many hours, well, chain or so, and well, I guess we go back to. The two guys with war spears, at you, Arkova, and the guy with the, the crossbow bolt, as he's. So they're, they're, the two with the spears are backing away as the other ogres are trying to get at you, but the guy with the, the crossbow is just pulling his back and looking at you. Will you let go of him now? He's giving you food. How more could you ask for, beast? Hello there. You want me to let go of him. Very well. And he grabs him and he throws him upon him. <laughs> <laughs> he is... I, I, I would say that he is, like, maybe 15 feet away. Oh, he, he'll, try, he'll try to shuffle... He'll try but to he, shuffle forward and just, just do, like, a running shuffle. To... <laughs> yeah, you, you, yeah, running shuffle is hard when there's, like, you attached to other ogres. It's, like, clank and then, like, oh, moving forward and... He, well, I'll, I'm, I'm going to hit one of the spearmen instead. Not, uh, not that way. Yeah, as, as you go for aggression, I 
he has higher reaction than you. Mm -hmm. So I will, yeah. Oh, 17. No, I don't, that's a four. Nope. Yeah. Uh, oh, then he must be... Oh, let's see. I should have the... Mm, it boosts on six. So, do you have anything to that, add to that roll? Uh, your roll, Philip? Mm, no, because uh, I've been attacked uh, three times, so that's my... No, no, this is a new round. This is a new round. Oh, okay. Well... In that case, uh, that's a seven in total, then. Okay, he boosts on you once. Okay. You take five damage by this uh, this bolt. Uh, the other spearmen are trying to engage, but uh, I, s I remember you have quite the speed. Well, at least... Oh yeah, my, my my speed is fifteen. Mm. Definitely. Mm. More than those in their leather armor. But uh, well, you get you can describe as being you're being uh, shot again with the other bolt looking. Oh, as I as like I a attempt full side target. As I uh, as I am just a big red target at this point, <laughs> I attempt to grab the other one as I try to say my my rather witty line, and uh, he takes aim and fires, and once more another black bolt from the shadows, uh, outlined by the by the with the ember glow, Shoom! and this one uh, lands in his abdomen, uh, piercing right through his stomach, <laughs> oh, God! right to his side, ah! and that pain. Fuels his rage and fury. How dare these bastards? He has a quest. He has a goal. He has things he needs to do. He's got people to see, people to murder, and these guys are in his way, and they will also be murdered as a result. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, so, well, Eros, you have somewhat. Uh, you're you're c quite close to the spearmen who are engaging as they see this ogre getting hit and hit and hit again. Their their friend getting half lived. No, it actually it's still your turn. Uh, I think it's it's still your turn, Akrova. You didn't get to do anything but begin lifting and getting shot in the abdomen. So. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to uh, to roll to pick up the guy I've been beating on and then throw him on one of the spearmen. Oh, it's a ten. Uh, you do pick him up, but you don't hit them. Okay, so what happens is I pick him up, but like when when the arrow is in me, and I'm stretching my body upwards. All oh, the pain, the ligaments as they stretch and tear from the from the wound of that wicked bolt. <laughs> it just tosses the guy off to the side, and the other ones with the spear they kind of just uh, move over shakily as their friend is now ragdolled and tossed off to the side as the trash that it is. As I stare upon them, my form bleeding the blood red against red flesh. As I yell off to my brothers and sisters. And I believe you do have you have a lot in in sing. Mhm. Mm I have five grades in sing. Yeah. So and actually, give, give, actually, give me give me that roll. Give me that roll. All right. All right. I guess you're screaming from the top of your lung. Mhm. Mm <laughs> He has a lot of sing. Just uh, don't don't be laughing there, Lou. Oh, what's oh! 36? 36. Oh! <laughs> uh, 35. Oh well. I. Hmm. Well. So, so what he'll do is when he when he slams him and he rises up, it'll start off with a metal. as it just echoes outwards for the rest of his brothers and sisters to hear, and the blood from his lip dripping down, and the blood from all the wounds pouring outwards. Ah! Another place about, like, the light speed of, of, of sound, you see the ostrich is kind of looking up, 
from his coil and then mm, place him down and then shoo, we go back. Two arrows as you hear this uh, ear shattering scream as you see right. the other two I... the two spearmen they 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 were engaging but now they're just just looking at this beast of a ogre. I, I fall to my knees and I cover my ears, detesting horrendously loud sounds nearly as much as I do smells, finding the company of ogres a horrendous thing always around. The smells, the sounds, there's nothing, nothing good about a big, filthy, red, dirty, despicable, mountain-born, cave-yawning ogre. And I think these things to myself, and I think, no, no, I don't like ogres. But what I really don't like is these smelly, bloodless beasts thinking that they have the right to put their, selves on, their hands on me and to bloody me and to rid my flesh, my perfect flesh, uh, and my eyes and flame. Man, let's have a quick look here. Ooh, that's a little bit better. A 15. Yep, get him. As he stands there, mesmerized and a little bit, uh, yeah, horrified. And perhaps... I as, as he's horrified, I fell to a knee, right, and I'm holding my ears. I use my move action to get up, and I, I, I and, and very, very slowly, the chain comes down over his face, wrap, and he sees it right with his eyes, like, oh, it goes tight, wraps behind him as I twist my arms, ripping them like that, oh, as the tremendous pain surges down each of my arms to my nervous system, I pull and pull as the chain rips against uh, uh, his eyes, not having much of a nose, he's in all the worst position as the chain rips and digs deep into the flesh. The chain against the eyes itself with no nose to protect it. The eyes are uh, slowly opening up, liquid and blood beginning to run from the eyes themselves. And finally, as the entire hand is pulled so extremely tight, blood pouring from the eternal hemorrhaging and rupturing from the ears along with a yellowy a secretion of unknowable proportions. A uh, 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 slime pours out and it pulls fine enough where the head itself begins. Uh, 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 the skin peeled and ripped much like my own. The eyes uh, ruptured like two popped grapes and all sorts of liquid. Uh, uh, such a strange thing to them. Pours now their face into their nose, into their mouth, making them taste, making him taste his own wretched internal fluids, the price to be paid for the sin of my flesh revisited upon him. An evil for an evil. I whisper into his ear. Is my gift for you. When I kiss him on the side of the ear and I let him drop as he pulls his hands to his face, uh, whimpering in utter horror and agony, blind and broken, his skull slightly crushed, turned in upon itself uh, as, as he lays there and convulses and shivers and, and vomits from his mouth. The other spearman just looking at his friend just as he's quivering, scream. There was a scream at first, but then it was it was so much too much pain screaming. So he just sits there on his knees. Well, not towards you, but towards his friend as he's just engaged in just horror, nearly dropping his spear as he he gets and not Vikish like at all. And then the guy with the crossbow. Looks at this, flipping his helmet down, and then pulling back the string again, slowly, just trying to become as the other Vikish in the camp, getting their armor on, and they just stopped and just looked at this, in shock that anyone could do, slaves could touch them, but he will try to <laughs> get at this monster. That's you, Ander, by the way. Friend. Oh, 14. Let's see. His friends slowly getting behind him.
You said 14, right? Uh, that, that's a hit. You could describe as he... What, what, is he full of the spear, you say? Uh, no, no, no. He is. Uh, he's a guy with a crossbow, orange head. He's just pulled his helmet down as you, as he saw you, and the other just killing his men. I am brutal. Uh, uh, it's four damage. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And right. yeah, I almost surpassed, but that yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let me just. Okay. All right. So as I'm just brutalizing and I drop him down, his body slumped on the ground, holding his eyes, whimpering. Uh, a, a bolt slams uh, into my shoulder, cutting through the top of it, blood pouring down, uh, leaving my, I would say probably, the, you know, just some ragged clothes at this point, and the blood just, just pooling around the, 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 the ragged clothes and wrappings. As as uh, the bolt flies through, leaving me with a bad flesh wound, I hold uh, onto my shoulder as I look up, glaring at, at this audacious fool. Well, it's your action, Akrova, as you are standing there, but no Viking shot within near reach of you. They mm -hmm. all disengaged thoroughly as this one guy stands there trying to hold the masses. The ogres are they're mixed reactions, but they will they can only move with you two guys because they are linked together with you. So they're trying to mm, use use their time to, to make you get where you got to go. Oh, as, as they're all standing there, um... One of them uh, picks up the war spear. Oh, that's good. In that case, uh, he's going to march forward towards the one with the crossbow in that case. And he starts marching towards him. His arms are outwards, and he starts beating his chest. Doom, doom, doom. You get that this round, but, uh... He, he suddenly stops, like, loading, and then... <laughs> 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 And it's your turn, um, Eros. All right. So with with these chains about me, uh, I guess I can't get to this crossbow man. Is that right? Uh, yeah, you're moving. You're moving too too slow. With you have the order of ogres having you to, they have to move with you. But uh, oh. um. Uh, Akova is moving forward, but they seem to be disengaging rather quickly, um, more so away from you. Not when you now you're beginning to move close to him, and the other spearman who's behind him, still looking at you with your these big eyes, not putting his helmet down yet. But all right, so the cross them right now. The crossbow man is not incredibly far away from me. He's just too far for me to get to directly. Yeah. yeah. I grab the spear from the ground as a move action, and I'm going to hurl it. I'm gonna hurl it. These are just sure. like normal, normal like type hunting type spears. Is that right? No, that's a, it's a war spear. It's it's big and thick, more like a. No, I can't hurl that. Okay, okay. I was thinking, I was I had a mispicture there. Um. Yeah. All right. And and one of the one of the ogres have had took it, but you can take it from. No, no, no. Well, no, it's too heavy to throw anyway, so it's irrelevant. So there, 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 there's there's no one in uh, close enough to me to attack. Them, isn't that right? Yeah. There's, there's the guy who's still, like, uh, technically alive, holding, crouching, just slowly, just nearly crumpling down to the... I don't worry about that. Covers, uh, salt covered beach. I can already tell these things are not food, so they can die on their own. Uh, I'm not really worried about that. And how many of them have withdrawn from us now? Uh, there's two dead lying at you, and two oh, are withdrawing, and two other are, two other are getting... Um, is is at the camp and is trying to get away as well. They're moving as you're looking at them. They're moving towards the beast of burden. You haven't got the name up yet. The crossbow man isn't. Uh, he he's standing the ground though, isn't it? Then. No no no. He's uh, he's moving oh. slowly backwards. He's not using his time to to reload. Right, his, well, his time if, to get away. 
seem to be posing a danger. I'm looking down at the, these guys here on the ground to see if I can find any sort of keys. Because I do know, I do know a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you have a, a about a round before a Acrobus like train of ogres are moving with him, and you do find a key on uh, one of the spearmen. The one start. you have there. Uh, yeah. Uh, I start un unlocking uh, myself first and foremost, and uh, so it would look like probably my my father's sword is off. With, the, with these others that I can't, that are trying to get away. Is that right, then? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to run at them now full force. Now that I've, uh, I've unlocked myself. I will throw, I will unlock myself, and then I will throw the key to uh, 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 Arkova. So. He's, he's in front of you. He's, like, getting at, so he's going to not be close to you. Right yeah, now. that loudly. Arkova! Look at me. I have something that will set you free. And I, I, I hurl a key into your direction. Just fly through the air. Oh, he grabs the key with his big hand, and there's a wicked smile that comes across his face as he says they're bound. <laughs> a quick, quick revision question. What is the key actually made of? Is it like copper, or, or what's it made of? Iron? Yep, it's iron. All right, so what I would do, I can't touch it, so I'm like, actually, so it should give it a little more rope on that. I kind of like push the iron and kind of push the iron up towards the other iron and kind of stick it in there and, and twist, twist as getting these things off me. And then I just kick the hell out of the key uh, towards you. It's like, dee, 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 across the, across the, the ground. And, uh, and I, I feel amazing having this off, but at the same time, it's like yanking a bandage off of a festering wound, and I'm just I'm running at them. Uh, I, I, I have to need to be done. I would I would say searching and unlocking both your hands and your legs would take a round. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just telling you. I mean, I'm sure they're getting some advantages, but I'm telling you what I'm going to do. You know, as quickly as I can do it. Yeah. And uh, you are Crover, you are moving perhaps a little bit, yeah, you're, you're moving quite too slow to get to them as they're disengaging. Yeah, moving well, towards uh, the, the, the beast. Well, since he's uh, throwing me the key, he's just going to spend the whole turn, like, unlocking himself at that point. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, it perhaps doesn't feel as amazing as with arrows, but oh. hmm. they haven't let you, got you, yeah. Oh, as, as, as he's free, as the, as those shackles come off, suddenly he feels his movement coming back to him. He's no longer bound by these shackles. He can now move freely. And he begins moving his arms back and forth a little bit, strutting his stuff as he's moving his legs as well. And he tosses the key to the others so that they may free themselves. Yeah, well... And let me see that athletics as you're trying to gather them as they are running now, full speed running towards the the cart with the strange beasts. All right. Well, my speed is a 14. Okay. I rolled. Um, I don't know. Did you want? Are you adding that to my speed, or what exactly did you want me to add that to? Um, I guess it would be your. Athletics, like athletics strength, or yeah, like strength for uh, for sprinting. All right. Um, now, Mihangi double their grades of athletics for running. So uh, I you, guess can, you could get you give it that too. Okay. Uh, that's four, six, fourteen. Fourteen is what I have. Yeah, you can you can get it at uh, at one of the uh, one of the guy with the spear, is running away. Um, I am. I have absolutely no desire. Well, I'm gonna. Let's actually just try to. I'll do it before I tell you. Ooh. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, okay, that's gonna be uh, sixteen. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you get at him. The other three are at at oh. the car, and you are you're nearly nearly there. But he was just a little bit too slow, a little bit too much armor. I'm crouched down at this point, just utterly filled with the fuel of, of, of 
vengeance is just coursing through me at the utter audacity of these loathsome things to do what they've done to me. And I, I'm looking down at the, the, the infested, infected wounds that they put on me, acidic like burns on my flesh, my perfect pure flesh, and I leap with, with just vitriolic fury on top of this thing, my jaw opening up, uh, snapping onto the top of his head, the, 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 the fangs piercing uh, uh, here and pushing down, uh, ripping his eyeballs in half, digging into the or orifices, the, the back snapping across his skull, putting pressure, the snapping sound of his skull can be heard throughout the land uh, as I push down his horrible, bitter, metallic uh, um, blood and viscous fluids oozing into my mouth, nearly making me vomit, but I hold on with all righteous indignation I have against these things, with the abhorrent abomination I hold for them. I just push and crush with my jaws, my large fang just digging in like a crown across his head of huge puncture wounds as I crush his skull beneath my unbelievably powerful jaws. And his war spear clatters to the ground, not getting lifted by him no more. But the others just hit the hit the hit the reins, and the car just yeah goes yeah sp yeah just speeding up at this uh, up at this well slight hill away from you. I, they, these speeds, these, these speeds are faster than a, a speed of, I would see they're about, about a speed of like 16, 17 ish, as they are like speed driving with this cart, only three persons in the cart, most of the cart's contents is out because they had the, it made a camp, but they do get away, those three left. Maybe two of them only getting, yeah, left because of their cowardice. But uh, you can take it away as the other ogres are gladly locking up, slamming their chest, smiling. He looks around, there's a, there's a, there's a glee of satisfaction in his eye. Um, uh, he'll begin to search to the cart that's left to see if there's any of his belongings in there as well. Um, the the cart is not there. They uh, moved the cart. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, you do find uh, your yeah some of your belongings. A lot of them have been like um, they have been in a big pile mm. and been like shaking around on the ground. So it's not in the best stand. You can see one of your mandolins like lift that it's out of tune. Oh, oh he, he picks it up with a... It's almost what they care as if you'd lift up a baby. And he would just pick it up and just start... One of the oh, strings is like loose and just hanging mm, there. Mm, not good. Well, he'll begin to sit there and, and, and slightly tune it, make sure the string is more taunt. And, but before that, he's going to set his stuff off to the side, and then he'll begin to pull the bolts out from him. Arr! Toss the one into the fire. Arr! Another one into the fire. Arr! And then toss the final one into the flames. His wounds finally opened up. He walks over towards the fire itself, and then he'll grab quickly... Uh, wrapping his hand in like a, a nice old wet cloth. He'll grab one of the stones that's been in the fire and quickly press it up against his flesh where the wound is, sealing it shut. And he'll do it each time with each one. I, I wince as you scream the noise profanity in my ear. Over and over I wince. I look at you. Yeah, as it was intended for. I'm gonna examine the the contents there, uh, suspecting at least some of my things would be there. Yeah, it's you, both of you don't find all of your belongings, but 
your weapon is there, at least. Mm. But some of the, it seems like your your pack with, with soaps, uh, like some of them have been taken out. Perhaps some of them have been like looting and like dividing them up between them as they have half of you were traveling one way and the other one was traveling the other way. Uh. Strange you're not taking Ferrum with them, but. Mm. Yeah. As he sits by the fire and then breathes heavily, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll grab a little bit to eat from, the, from what's left. Yeah, there's a, there's like a, kettle, a kettle of uh, of meat, and there's like a kettle which like tilted because you did what you did to mm. that man. <laughs> so that's still something in there. And they're like, all the ogres like just eating it with their hands, just greedily just eating it. It'll be... He'll begin to eat it, and as he does, uh, getting some of that renewed vigor of, of food in the belly after so long, and this victory that has now been bestowed upon us, he'll look towards everyone, and uh, he'll begin singing a little bit and moolish, uh, a little song for everyone. First, I gotta give a barber roll. I begin to bulge and foos myself as well. I'll kind of glance that's, that's at the barbers. Now I, I start to be just slightly worried they might all turn on me and their loathsome custom. Um, uh, afterwards, uh, he, he, he looks around and then he begins to sing a little song in moolish... Um, and then he'll actually he'll switch it over into Sindarian halfway, um, and the song will be a sort of like a like a little poem that he'll he'll just have made up on the spot. Seventeen ogres, red-haired man in tow, getting drug along in chains by men with no noses. Get the ogres mad. Now they're all dead. Yo, this is more. And he'll he'll do something like that for for a while. The ogres are uh, they are pleased by the, they're sitting they're sitting by the fire, just nearly forgetting their their hurt ankles and and wrists just for a little bit of a their little little time, smiling. Some of the ogres are perhaps not looking at the bloody oh, arrows so much as you singing, but, well, if you want for the jealousy. <laughs> There's still a, yeah, a hard place not to look. But you sit there under the, the covers of the like small tent poles made by the Vikish for them. Now they are all yours. And even for you, Eros, the, the food is, is not, yeah, it's only cooked. Perhaps a little bit of, like, cave salt is in there, but that's about what is uh, it's getting, yeah, that's how fancy they got. But most of your, yeah, things is there as you sit, enjoying the, the well, the sky turning black. The moons leering at you, perhaps they're yeah, not pleased with your victory, surely. You don't see it as that one over sings in the night. Into the night. Oh, yeah. I, I just sit down. I'm kind of rubbing towards my wounds, having no way to do anything about this. As, as slowly my trance overtakes me and the utter exhaustion that I've been forced to and now uh, taking whatever liquids I can as well as um, eating this, this food I, I my, my body is beginning to just completely shut down not having the highest big score there's no water but the soup it's not not keeping water. You don't see any water jugs. This is strange to you, to both of you. There's not no water here. Only meats and some salted cave fish and other 
such foul thing. A few mushrooms is there, and well, if any of you have the outdoors, you know you can squeeze some water out of there. But uh, well, ogres would gladly eat them, but not me, hunky. Mm. Oh, I gladly do. I, I eat them. I eat the whole thing. <sighs> Mm. And they, there's a lot of food, by the way. There's uh, a lot of food, a lot of like, like dry fruit. Food. Eat well, my brothers and sisters. Ho ho ho! Today we have won victory, and we have won food. Hmm. Not much in water, though. Seems these uh, fellows do not like to drink. Ha ha ha! Do not worry. They will drink the dirt. And he puts his foot on one of them that's down on the ground. It kind of smushes it in a little bit. That's, that's the one with like the horrendous forming thing on its eyes. It's just gurgles and the mud still alive. Half the sleep seems to be taking it as you're shoving it down there. Oh, it appears to be alive. Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 barely alive, but it's oh, it's alive. Oh well, well, in in that case, he grabs it and then with a swift, he just breaks its neck. Just straight, he just grabs its head. <laughs> As he puts his knee on it, almost the way that, uh, and he does it in a way as if he's uh, putting down an animal that's in pain. He just grabs it, he caresses the head ever so, mm. and just twists the head. But it, it, it's a little too hard, and so the head comes around and almost faces him directly. And then he sees the horrified look in his face and he goes, oh. And he kind of bends it back and puts it face down. And then, um, mm. And shakes his head a bit and sits back down and begins to eat. But we shift this, yeah, shift to another another camp, just slowly hiding in the in the hay, hazel, not bushes. As you hear a car just, just in full gallop. I'm not sure if that's an English word, but it's now. It's trampling, just not not seeing your camp, but just trampling by your camp. And you hear people like, one of them is just yelling at the other in Tuhulian profanities and, yeah. But they are most certainly getting away. You know, I just look out in that direction and I hide. Like, you know, I, I just sort of duck down a bit. Um, I don't dirty myself by putting my stomach on the ground or anything. But you know, I'm, I just kind of duck down, like, hmm? trying not to be seen. That's all. Oh, there they go. Only two, though. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. What happened to the rest? And I slowly oh, turn towards you. It does not look like you have passed your yourself into uh, what is is you you fairies do? Uh, what is it? Uh, trance? It's, uh, mm, it, perhaps trance. Reverie, the dream walk. We've got uh, many a name for it, but yes, yes, hey, yes. you asked me to stay awake and vigilant, so I'm staying awake and vigilant. You will notice. Perhaps, perhaps now is our time. I think it is. Did you, did you hear? On the wind, a howl, like a beast. and then a shout of mighty rage. Mm. Something yeah. tells me those those two are the only two left. Mm. I'll just be quiet about this. Go now. Get on the car. Take the reins. I get on the cart with you. To start yeah. taking other yeah. things, you know, they're, I guess they're putting away. Take some cloth off the wagon. 
there are ostrich, ostrich look at both of you disappointed and well slightly misplaced. You, you be quiet now. Don't, don't be. It's quite, quite a thing now. It, it's quiet, but it don't seem happy. But <laughs> it's just waking out of this beauty sleep. It's it's just it's yeah, a bit grumpy. You know, we slowly. Sl I mean, I assume he yeah. he takes the reins because he knows his direction. That's what. So. Yeah, yeah, and and you, I, you do find it as you put out the fire. I guess I hope. And uh, <laughs> and as the archers take you to the same place as before and a bit further and you see the camp with uh, you can hear singing you can hear snoring huh. what do you see there so, so I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you what those ones back there and anyway I, I point to where, where the Vikish left on, on their on their mounts I've never known them to sing any song. No. Down there, I believe we hear the victors. Mm. Perhaps they, uh. Perhaps they don't have enough room for the. for the loot that they gain from these, uh. steel men. Maybe what they, uh. See? need what you see, a bit Lord? of help. Who still need a bit of help carrying it. Hmm. Like interrupting you, this you're like just like you know who's there. <laughs> what do you see down there? Who's making that noise? Hmm. Yeah, let's have a let's have a better look. And I, I I I gaze down there with my eyes well accustomed to the darkness. Hmm. You see six ogres, one Mianggi. Three of the ogres are sleeping by now, and well, there is uh, one with a lot of like you can probably not see it from here. But one with a lot of new forming scars, and two others sitting up, listening to the song. Oh, and it smells foul here, just <laughs> horrendous. But <laughs> and there's a little bit of like cooked meat in it, but it's just. The foulness is so like thick that it's just yeah it's 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 horrible but yeah they don't seem to mm. mind. So I, I creep back to uh, Apitox. There's ogres down there. It seems uh, those tower and mountains of red have won the day over the steel men. There's also that. That one, that that red one, like a howling manslayer, but but different, blood instead of snow. He's he's down there. It seems familiar in some way. Something something I should remember, but no. Do you have you spoken with with ogres before? Uh, I can speak to them in the the tongue of flame. Some may know it. Some do. Mm. I have not much experience with the brutes. Uh, I'll remain on the cart. Surely none of them. None of them will understand the language of beauty, Cinderian. No, of course not. But I do know of hobgoblins. I know the treachery that they have committed. I will remain on the cart and get a bit closer. Perhaps allow them to see us. If it looks that they are aggressive, they chase after us with maddened teeth, fury in their eyes. Mm -hmm. 
Hogan's wheel after battle or a, or a bedroom romp tend to drink themselves into a stupor. I don't know if they have any anything to imbibe down there, but when they're sno- some of them are snoring already. When they're all snoring, I tell you what, the steel, this is a rare thing, may help us on our way. Find passage here and there. Something to uh, something to pick up. Better see how they care first. Get ahead of ourselves. Cool. Yeah, I wasn't gonna ask him. I look at you and I'd say I just look at you. Go on. Go ahead. Go quietly. I will right. take the reins of this thing. So, mm-hmm. creeping, creeping through the underbrush, the cover of the darkness, I go closer and and closer to the to the camp where recently a, a victory was won. You can roll uh, stealth move silently, and uh, if you feel the roll uh, perception hearing, so we just get uh, that straight. At this point, the the other male ogres are sleeping, and the the females are one of them in front of them is falling asleep while the other talk, but one of them is sitting sitting close to you. Uh, I'm um, around uh, around you. Yeah, you you are. I am. You are in uh, in 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 trance. I am in trance, but uh, even with the minus ten penalty from that, I have. Uh, two, three. I have a uh, 10. That's even with my penalty. No, you don't. Uh, no, no, you no. nearly, but no, you don't hear the the sneakiness. This Okra is just, yeah, is holding around Okrova's, uh, yeah, waist, I guess. Slowly falling asleep. Oh. So I'm looking around, I'm getting a getting a count of how many ogres there are, are seeing what they've got, what they might do. Hmm. And I, and I they they piled all the um all the Vigish up, right? Burned them? Mm, no, there's two lying like off closer to the the very reflective surface of the the foul smelling lake. You see this mist just coming from it. Mm. I uh, oh, cover my nose, and then I'm gonna try and go go round about to uh to one of those outlying dead bodies and 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 see what's going on with him. Strangely unlooted, considering the the ogres, they they were too they were too quick to celebrate their victory. You it's like food and then a dead body. They can't eat. That's not a choice, you know, not for an ogre. But yeah, it it sits there in this studded studded armor. It has no weapons on it, but there's like a large chain just close to it, large iron chain. There's blood on it at the end of it, closest to it. Oh, I just look at that. Oh, brutal. And, and it was with iron, too. That's disgusting. Yeah. And he is clad in yeah, this... Uh, he has... Um, yeah. Fur boots on. A helmet. Gleaming. All perfect. And this this nearly... Yeah. You can see your own reflection in it slightly, but it is but it is iron. You can tell. Oh, you're wearing iron, not Maybe. steel. Yeah, oh, no, not steel. You have. Uh, okay. Do we have anything in blacksmithing? No. No. So you see a pile of rubble just laying mm-hmm. close in a pile. So I'm just I'm just looking him over like I can't take off armor. Uh, well. And I and I pick up that that helmet, you know, and it's and it's made of iron. And just imagine 
imagine that helmet has been sitting out all day in the sun, and and I pick it up and it's just like, oh, you know, it's not not physically doing damage to me as as it would to uh to perhaps someone else, but I'm just like, oh, it's, oh, this is awful, and and I sort of put that to the side, and then I begin to tug off those uh those fur boots that might fetch uh fetch something. If you are like taking way too off big the for me. If, yeah, they are. And then if you're, you're taking off the helmet, you can see he has like, uh, his, like his jaw is slightly like open. He's clearly dead, but you can see like there's like a bit of um, oh. like something. Someone did something to his teeth. Like there's like a, 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 some of the teeth are not his own. They're like on a like a brace, a bracelet of like in copper wires just in his teeth, and there's like teeth sitting there. He's like slagging with his mouth. You can see that. But bit of so, dentist work. So, uh, so we're not talking like gold teeth. That, no, no, no. Uh, we're talk <laughs> uh -huh. we talking about like um, mm, not like a whole uh, gibis. I don't know what it's called, but like teeth. That's just some of them is like there's a wire, and some of the teeth like in the sides are not his own. They're like hold together by wire. Okay. Like so. like false teeth attached to bracers or braces braces. Yeah yeah. Was what like I think like old people have okay. like. Okay yeah, like dentures so. but with wire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay so yeah I just sort of looked at that like mm, and I weigh like copper wire reaching into a vigish's mouth and I decide against it and so yeah I'm, I'm taking those boots off and. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And now I start trying to make my way over to the other uh, outlying body. Well, that is quite close to the to the other oak who's sleeping, and the one next. Mm, I, I feel. I guess. You, I, guess uh, I feel brave. Uh, you, you would probably notice that uh, the singing that is that is being done it, it it is in Moolish at first, but then it switches over to Sindarian, and. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I listen then to this song, this song of victory. Huh. I suppose I have to eat my words that I spoke to Apotex. Huh. And, and I, I, I enjoy the sound now. I, I enjoy this this singing. This this ogre is quite skilled. And I think back to to flame dance, and you would make a good addition there. Maybe that's where he was headed. But now it's time to loot. <laughs> yeah, and the other one has um, he has well, they they haven't take took uh, taking his sidearm as he was just going. So he has like uh, like daggers by his side. And oh, that's a uh, that's a, actually a cauldron. No, that's like food on the floor. They they probably pulled the cauldrons like food, like mm -hmm. on his or on some of his uh, like armor and. Fur boots, but this one has a bit more things to to loot, and he has like his helmet with the teeth, like big teeth of a saber-tooth cat. You could recognize because you have been in flame that you see in Nigali. Looks like a Nigali mm -hmm. skull, and then just these big teeth. But the skull is made of iron, made made it to look like these horrific beasts. Oh, so I look at this. Oh, it's a work of art. Too bad it's out of this garbage. And I'm slowly trying to pull that, that work of art off of his head. You know, I want to t take that, that iron dagger off his belt. This is worth something to someone. And people pay for oh, this it, iron it, trash. It's, it's steel. Oh. It's a steel dagger. Well, you see it. Okay, so may maybe not recognizing steel immediately, but like when I touch it, it's not as offensive to my touch. Yeah, I, I don't have blacksmithing, so I oh. No, no, it it's just it yeah. it looks nicer, not less dark, more reflective. Oh, I wonder if this is steel. Yeah. And I, and I put that sort of in my my, my Travis cloak because it is reflective, and I don't I don't want these ogres seeing it quite yet. But you are very close. So I think 
all should roll a roll again, and I will give you a minus mm -hmm. two penalty because you are like, like okay. two two like, yeah, seven feet away from them, like one ochre length away. And uh, you, Eros, you can also roll as he's very close to where you are meditating. As he's looting poor Vygish. Poor Vygish. <laughs> They're poor now. <laughs> yeah, I took all their loot. Yeah, I, I don't think... Uh... Uh, I don't really so much think so with the the uh, uh, five I just got. No, no, they they are still completely oblivious to your light feet as you are looting. Even even the sleeping ogres, I they're mm -hmm. they're snoring hard, but just just yeah, paces. So, um, it is so who? Okay, so obviously, um. Eros and, and Phil are awake, and there's one other. No, no, no. Eros is not awake. He's in trance. Oh, trance. Yeah, and there's like a female ogre like slumped on uh, Eros is uh, now slumped on her his uh, his shoulder, her arms around her yeah. his wa waist, listening, with like a big teeth showing off that maw of the ogre, or Chris in this. She has closed eyes and is just listening. Maybe, yeah, so calm, both of them, all of them. But what would you do? All right. So, uh, having having grabbed what I could, I uh, well, time to get out of here. Well, the getting's good, and I uh, and I I do begin to to sneak up the hill, unless I then I spy their cart because they they came in a cart and there were oh, things. No, no, the cart they 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 uh, they the, the Vikings got the cart and got away. That's how they got away. Oh, that that was them. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, but they have like a, a like kind of tent structure just there. There's like a big pile of stuff just by the oh. tent. Yeah, like food stuff. Do you see that okay, there's like so open open food stuffs and uh, <laughs> I guess it smells it's just nice over there, like soaps and good stuff. It's just like you 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 with in the smell. Get iron utensils for, for fire working and uh, stuff. But that's very close mm -hmm. to to the the awake ogres. All right, and, and, and emboldened by my by my looting, of course I, I need to head over there, and um, you know I, I I go over to the tent with my keen uh, kitsune senses. I'm smelling those nice smells and going around. Yeah, I think you see him now. Akrova, you cannot you cannot be so distracted by music and a and a and a lady that you not see a kid soon, six feet away from you, sniffing the air, getting out oh. just in in the firelight, just getting out of in into the firelight. Just. So so all that's happening, he's he's in the middle of the song, and then he just stops and goes, oh. He turns his form towards you, and then goes, hmm, lo there, who are you? Uh. And, and as soon as he st seems to address me, I how how close is the closest dead Vigish? Um, you there's are a close one. Closer to you, yeah. That, that's that's a close one. He's like seven feet away. You're like you're you're like just your foot is just like yeah, a feet away from an ogre. Just one feet away. It's just sneaking. Okay. But so seven feet away. So. So when 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 he um, uh, addresses me like my tail just boing, sticks st straight up, floofs out. I yeah, I jump in the air, the st steel dagger out, jump, run and jump those seven feet, just stick it 
into that that dead Vigish's neck. Oh, this. He was he wasn't quite dead. He he was getting back up. I, oh, you should thank me. He he walks over slowly and then kneels down. Hmm. That is good. Oh, I, I definitely. This, this is the one you just broke the neck off, just so you know. That's why it closed. Oh. No, no, no. He was already gone. I remember. I did that to him. Then he like picks up the body and kind of shakes and shows his head is like just practically Ooh. ragdolling. You can hear some of the bones popping and crinking. He just kind of drops him. Hmm. Oh well, uh, certainly. Uh, you're the, you're certainly a strong one. I I I, th- I thought I saw twitching. I I I'm just a simple simple traveler. I was. Hiking around here, just enjoying the, and, and I looked at this smelly lake, like, it, oh, uh, we're speaking Sindarian since, like, I, I heard him uh, s- talk, uh, singing in it. I'm, I was just enjoying the, uh, the sights, uh, and uh, saw tra- uh, travelers in, in distress, these these vagish, and, and, you know, I, I point to him, and I, I do know the correct name, the, they uh, blasted past me on the road, riding their their creatures there. They had a cart, and I know what Vagish do. I I know their ways, and I want to make sure that no good soul was a uh, was being clapped in chains and taken away. I cannot abide such a such a thing, and I'm sort of backing away from the ogre. <laughs> the, 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 the female ogre is just. What, what is he speaking about? Why is he here? Uh, he, he turns to her and, and, and Mula, she goes, It is all right. He is merely a concerned traveler, this small one is. Mm. No, they're the, they're the lying ones. <laughs> and I know. My mom told No, me. no, I, I wouldn't lie. I've got a dozen he's, friends he's, up he's, on that hill. And they will tell you I am not, I am not one who lies. She speaks in Moolish, but... Mm. <laughs> there, oh, I, 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 okay, she speaks in English, so I don't know, um, no, I don't know what she's saying, but I, I do mention the, the dozen friends. Like, I, I got a dozen friends. Mm. Yeah, she's just like pointing, pointing to you a bit. Like, if you have any greater insight, she's clearly suspicious, not talking well about mm. you. But... Well, now. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, and uh, if you, yeah. You would have snapped out of it. I'm saying that most of the ogres are probably too exhausted to get out of real slumber. I, uh, I'm like blinking my eyes and kind of looking around. I look over. You know, I don't, I don't even know what a cartoon is. So I'm like looking at it, like trying to figure it out. And I stand up and I start walking over. Who are you? And why are you here? And I start sniffing the air, trying to catch your scent. If I look nervous around the the giant ogres, this this is even worse. And I I back away. Uh, what what language was was this? Well, I hear Sindarian when I wake up, so that's the language I speak okay. in. Yeah. I <clears throat> I'm but a, a, a simple simple traveler, just making sure that no one is is waylaid around here. I, I see that. You were attacked by these vile, vile folks. I, I, I stuck one of them, making sure he was dead. I, I saw there was there was twitching, and there was treacherousness in his in his movements. And I uh, just wish to make sure that no one was taken unaware. As I'm, I'm a simple traveler going from place to place, not. Bothering nobody, and I'm like tucking some of the loot like back, back behind my cloak. I begin to smell you, sort of crane my neck in, and I look you very slowly up and down, and back up again, and I glance at his body. First, my impulse is to believe that you're lying, and slowly with your words, I begin to find that well, perhaps it's 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 likely that, that 
at least you attempted to help us there. So I'll at least give you that uh, the benefit of the doubt on that. Well, you've come here and say you've helped us with this. Whatever it is, I couldn't even tell you. Disgusting, foul, smelling, inedible creature. Well, my thanks to you to aiding us, in other words, uh, Arkova. But uh, do you know where there is some sort of, uh, shall we say, a civilization here that we might take part in? I, am, I show my wounds to you. I am burned, shall we say, and would like proper respite for myself and these other would-be offerings and whatever mantle these dead ones now would have had set us upon. What do you know, little little one? And I look down, I'm about 6'5". Uh, <clears throat> yes, I... Uh... Around here, you, you've surely heard of, of Flame Dance, yes? About two chains. Well, now I do believe I've heard of that. And I point in the direction. Me, I believe I heard of that from the information you sent me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you definitely heard about it. You heard about great wine. There was a Duke of Sids really uh, selling that wine. We have heard of that, have we not, of Kova? Oh, yes. And he, like, narrows his eyes when you say flame dance, and he goes, Mmm, yes. This is definitely a place I have heard of and a place that I wish to go to, yes. As he's talking to you, maybe, like, drawing your attention my hand, all of a sudden you find it, like, on your shoulder, uh, Trevor, and I'm like, yes, perhaps you would be so inclined to take us there directly, or at least when the morning dawn touches the sky. Uh, I file my big teeth with like, God knows, some kind of horrible liquid on them uh, and, and, and bits of something in between them that does not look wholesome. I just smile, showing all the teeth. Uh, well, it's and, and being... <laughs> Being in fact familiar with with what that is, uh, you know, and actually <laughs> seeing it firsthand before with previous me, Hungy, I uh, I can take you to Flame Dance. Uh, you all be quite quite welcome there, but not directly. I uh, have a few places to go now. Strong and doughty fellows such as yourself, and I, you know, look at, look at the bodies. I, I glance at you, Arcova. I glance at one of like the iron manacles, and I glance at you, uh, uh, Kitsune. Uh, nonsense. I'm sure you would be very happy to escort us. But, uh, well, and I smell you like drinking your scent in, and in a way perhaps like no one ever smelled you before, just exploring you with my sense of smell. I'm sure I can make it worth your while. For at least a little while. Come down. The, 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 promise, the promise of payment seems to uh, assuage the fact that I'm staring into living nightmare. Oh, oh. I, I, you are welcome to to join us, my, my friends and I. I certainly, have... pat the be- I certainly pat the back of your head. Come down. <laughs> Do not make me back. It would be so unbecoming. No, no, a flame dance seems like a wonderful place. I do like flames, after all. Uh, of, of this I have no doubt, and your companion here, and now I actually try to move towards the ogre for the first time. Uh, I, I, I allow you, but follow you, my hand still rubbing the back of your head, ever so gently caressing. Yes. Yes, come over here. This is this is uh, Okova. I am Eros Adonis. And, and what is your name, my fine fey fellow? 
You have to forgive me for not seeing the likes of you before, nor smelled it, though you are interesting upon my nose. Yeah, and and uh, Akova, he just like he he kneels down the way he, you would talk to like a little child, and he's like, "Hmm, yes. What is your name?" Yes, you simply address me as Kuro. It's my my name here, and uh, oh. yes, of course you you are. Well, I just introduced him, didn't I? Listen up, my well, yes, you have. I, I, I would like. I was just to to Eros. Oh, I am. I am Eros Adonis. I have introduced myself to both of us, in fact. So we. Oh, now all good, fast friends. That's uh, very nice. Uh, I smile, my, my, my teeth showing, my hands still kind of caressing you. Periodically, I, I, I smell you, inhaling you. Uh, doesn't he seem like a fine guy? Hmm. The finest. I, I was hired as a guide. It's a, a, one of my, my many specialties. Wait. Whom hired you now? Uh, my, my friend, as I, as, as I spoke of before, and I'm, I'm looking up, up at the hill like, come on. I start kind of glancing jet? around now as, as you're indicating someone else is here, so I start glancing around. And you see, like, slowly, like this big uh, jet black, a big drawn by this ostrich with a jet black colored feathers and this red neck head. There's a little cart where this, this other figure just sort of in a cloak uh, is, is looking. You could see, I guess, tusks coming out um, uh, you know, of the face you know, with your vision. But it's like maybe... I, I keep far away purposely, uh, probably about 60, 70 feet or so. <laughs> you just see me like looming off, slowly sort of approaching... And, like, when I see them look at me, you know, I, like, gently pull on the reins and that, like, trying to get it to stop, but the thing doesn't stop and it, you know, keeps sort of going a little bit before it finally stops. I'm like, <laughs> My all it's, it's, it's the ostrich look at you, like, just looking at the lake and then looking at you like you brought, brought this into this horror, horror smell, it's blaming you. As it looks behind them. Yeah, my eyes are just narrowed. At, as I have poor vision. I'm just like... I'm, just I'm, I'm looking back at you and I say, Koro, by all that crawls upon the face of Daman, all that flutters in the breeze of Eggvale, of all that lurks forever seeing in the faces of Morgul, all that which swims through the breath of Leviathan, by all the trees and the body of Nif, what is that thing? Y'all y- never seen an orc? Mm, I'll tell yeah. you about the orc. A yeah. magical people. Mm. A people of, of flesh, but also of the leaves and the wood. Yes, you'll never pierce the mysteries that is an orc. Impossibly old, impossibly intelligent. Yes, this is the ally that I have so, that I am so fortunate to have gained. That that is your ally. It looks like some sort of monster dredged up from some past dream and flung down to death. Oh, my good arrows. He is a monster. But in this case, he's my monster. Oh, you don't say. I heard much about orcs. Never seen them. I even learned to speak tongue. Hmm, yes. Oh, to speak the tongue of the orc, this is a... A fine thing indeed. Rare. A rare skill. One to be praised. If you were to break words with him, I think you'd be quite impressed. 
your mm. body is obviously powerful, but your mind, ah, that is something of equal stature. Oh, it is sharp, like top of mountain it is. Mm, piercing the heavens, ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> and he turns, and he, and he, and he meets you, and he, he looks at the orc uh, towards his eyes, uh, gives a slight approach, and, and, uh, and Thraxa, he says, Lo there, I am Arkova. This here is Eros. Mm -hmm. A pleasure to meet you, Orkishness. I just watch my hands on, on the reins. I look at you two. I begin to like smell you and to smell your bird. Mm. Interesting. And then I, I look at uh, uh, Kuro here. And then I look at the other two. And then I like you see me slowly nod up and down. And then I slowly begin to whip the with uh, guide the birds' reins. But get a bit closer. I sniff the bird again, and I kind of glance over to uh, <laughs> to Arkova and glance back at the bird. It it looks at you like with this, those big eyes filled with what would be close to irritation. If there's just a, there's a small flicker of intelligence there, as it seems displeased by being close to this horrid smelling lake as it turns its hairs away from it a bit. You smell it, but it does just smell lovely. Mm. You know, I look at uh, Arkova, you know, when it, you know, as I get a bit closer, and I, and I look at you and I make eye contact and I just sort of nod, and, and Thraxa I say, you know, I appreciate your attempt. But then I, then I speak in Sundarian. I... Over here, you wounded. See, I do. And I gesture to your to your wrists, uh, Ander. Yes, I hold one up. It's quite painful. Do, do you know of, of herbs or ointments and such things? I've been stripped of my more useful ones in the situation of. Easing and soothing with burning sensation. What mm. fairy do here out far would you? Why? I'm speaking Sindarian to you. We were abducted by these things that have now found a home in death. We were taken here against our will most assuredly. We wished to find Flame Dance, and your compatriot he has assured me he possesses the skill to show us the way to a new residence. Does, does yes, he. Hey, you hear that? Splendid. Well. I will take your vouching for him as strong praise for his uh, skill. Mm. And, uh, I smell the air again. Yes. Why don't you... Uh, what might we do to convince you to, uh, to head back there with us so that we might find proper with residence, this is his most unbecoming. I look at Kuro again, and you could already see the answer in my eyes, my the the, the hard shadows of my eyes. And I look back at you, uh, Eros, and I slowly shake my head. No, stay. Time few. Then, flame dance. Go. We take. You will need to take some time here, you are saying. There are likely more of these slavers about. I'm sure they would gladly register both of you into their services. It's quite dangerous. Mm, they took us in chains, yes. But uh, we? Mm, we made short work of them. Mm, that we did. Mm. Well, well, I've done, seen uh, 
the brutality you unleashed a couple of was memorable, I shall say. I quite enjoyed it. There. Yeah. Suffering. So, you, uh, orc, you have some way to heal this, to soothe it, to ease the burning to some degree. Slowly I get off, I let go of the reins, and I slowly get off the wagon. I move, I move towards you in a way that indicates I'm not afraid of you. Mm -hmm. That gesture to you. And then, like, you're a little bit closer than I thought you would be, and I'm like, ah. and I, like, kind of pull back a bit. I have an extremely strong presence, by the way. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, my presence is commanding, like, look at me, look mm -hmm. at me now, to, to pretty much everyone. Um, I, I stand out strongly with, with some sort of regal flair that's perhaps unidentifiable. Mm. I do. And I, you know, I, op I start opening a bag. I, I take it out. Um, but then, you know, like I take it out, put it on my shoulder, and then I gesture for you to follow. I, I make my way yeah, over. I follow you. Certainly. To a, to a stone to, like, not in the center of where the other sleeping ogres are, but to your dismay, uh, perhaps Eros, a um, little bit closer to the waters. Uh, but I, but I like sit you down there, um, you know, perhaps by a rock. And I gesture for you to like sit down, and you know, and I just for you to put your hand on like, uh, put your, you know, your hands on a, on a rock or something. And then you, you see me reach into the bag, and I take the, I take out very strange looking contraptions. Imagine uh, like a, a weird looking. Perhaps made out of bone and sticks and a little bit of tied by little bits of twine. These little interchangeable, um, perhaps lenses of, of glass uh, of glasses. Uh, and there's like several of them, you know. And you see me kind of put that in front of my in front of my face as I just sort of look at and I look very sort of closely, sort of diagnosing, uh, you know, this skin and then the, the bruising and whatnot. And, and, and then you see me take out another sort of strange-looking uh, contraption. Uh, it kind of, and I, and I press it up against your your skin. It, it looks like a bone that that something happened to. It looks like it has like a porous um, surface to it. But I press that up against your your skin, um, right, like on your wound. And I'm actually quite. Um, Little, little, perhaps a little rough on your uh, sensitive uh, face skin, but I should have pressed it down a bit. Pain register across my face. I'm not, uh, I'm not able to hide it. And I pull back immediately. I'm like, oh. and I look back at you and I pause. And I continue working. Um, I don't seem to be angry. I don't know what kind of insight you have. I'm guessing, I'm guessing you have some, but I don't seem angry. Just like I'm trying to grin and bear it. And you know, I take out a little mortar Notice and a pestle. Wound. And... Uh, uh, well, I would say like a flesh wound here in my shoulder as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I look at that, and I, mm -hmm. then you start seeing me take out several other little bones. Uh, they look like cut off pieces of uh, dried, uh, perhaps uh, gourds or mangoes, and and they've been dried and they're they're hard and there are those sort of wooden bones that I take out some herbs and I start grinding out a little mortar and pestle, and uh, you see me start taking out some wrappings. Of course, that is when Kuro, uh, you see what I've been bringing. You know these strange-looking tools um, and mm -hmm. uh, other sort of. Uh, and I also take like this. And then, uh, um, you know, to your shoulder, you know, I, I put some nice, very cool, uh, cooling-feeling uh, ointment, you know, over your wrists, and I start wrapping uh, some very some some cloth, very simple gray uh, cloth around your around your wrists, and you know, I go to your shoulder. And I take out another tool that's like a very intricate uh, little wooden stick and tied to it with twine is, uh, looks to be a tooth, a little uh, fang that's curved slightly uh, like, a, like a fisherman's hook, in which case I start stitching, uh, you know, pressing the needle into your skin and, and out and, you know, working, uh, stitching your, uh, your wound up. And... Um, and, uh, I'm like uh, clearly wincing as you put the thread to flesh. You know, you say I'm just very, very working, and I'm a little, a little rough with you. Um, 
but uh, eventually, you know, I, I sort of do as, that. As you look at me, you notice my eyes have, uh, as, as well, as you're just stitching in, you look back and you see my eyes are, they're blazing. It's just to say, they don't look like anything you've seen before. They don't look like an eyes full of anger. They literally look like flame is coming out of them. Um, and, I, and I pause every, you know, like I pause when I see that. And I'm very tense now. Please continue. And I continue. Oh, frustration. Oh, the... Well, actually, before I continue, you know, I, I look at you and I and I hold the tool on the wound and I, I go into a bag again and I hand you I, a... My eyes are following what you're doing uh, very I take out. I, I breathe in deeply as you open the bag, sensing mm -hmm. the smell what's in there. And I take out a... Uh, it looks like a wooden stick that was wrapped uh, by several bands of leather, in which case I gesture mouth in help. I open... As, as, you, as you hand it to me, I just open my mouth Revealing this literal like bear trap uh, in, inside my face, uh, very different than your anatomy. Then okay? I look at that. I'm like, mm. Mm. then I gesture. I shake my head. Mm. Will be sufficient. I hand it back to you, Winston. Just do what you need. And my eyes still glow with rage and orange flame. Very, you know, very slowly. Popping in uh, the, the leather and you know pulling it uh, as I'm slowly sort of t stitching up the wound and you know I see uh, uh, Zova the the other ogre as well all the wounds on him but I just look at him and uh, but I but I continue my work and eventually I, I'm done with uh, as you look over to him I actually reach over kind of take your hand and tilt it back towards towards my injury. No, no, right here. Focus your attention. And I look down at that, and, and then I, and I like, nod. Uh, and I'd say, it will take several days for this to heal properly. There will be minimal. Then I stop for a second. Scar. Mm, little. I wince. I'm very displeased at that word. Uh, perhaps then we may come to accord. We will need your help. Your fairies help to find flame dance if you will be so accommodating. If so, then we should make proper um, pre. Uh, how to say it in Sundarian? Um, offering to you of aiding you on what you are about here. As we need your help, I do not wish to be found enslaved. It is not acceptable. No, no acceptable. And I is, it, get up. is it acceptable to join your company for the intervening interval of time? Stand up and look at you, and I just nod slowly. Uh, then I extend to you my sincere appreciation for your benevolence. You know, I, I look at uh, Kuro and, you know, perhaps the other wounded ogres, but then, you know, I, I look at, back at Kuro again and you see I take out some other other sort of strange uh, looking tools, very intricate, uh, looks like you know, pieces of uh, semi-transparent kind of Looks like petrified skin that has been wrapped around, uh, perhaps uh, like a, a bowl with a closed lid at it uh, at the, at its top, and I take uh, some other sort of looks like intricate um, looks like glassware, but it's it's not made of glass. It's sort of made out of uh, you know petrified skin, uh, sort of semi uh, petrified fruits, really uh, dried hardened fruits and, and other sort of. Uh, Things like that, but um, you know, I'll, I'm going to make my way over to the uh, to the waters actually, um, and and testing something out. Um, I'm actually going to take a very, um, you know, I'm going to go over to the Vigish. You know, I'm going to uh, kind of look where their fingers are, and I'll snap off a nail, 
Um, and, you know, perhaps I'll, I'll gesture over to Koro. You know, I'll gesture, like as I break off the nail, I'll gesture for you to come closer and say, finger, I need. Uh. Both of you would, at this point, have realized that the feet of the ogres are nearly, well, it's just shades, yeah, five shades off the, the, the red blood that is their skin. And their hands are also just up to their arms, are uh, just pale, just too too pale for an ogre, nearly, nearly pink, but more grayish red, not that bright pink. Would expect. Like as if Kuro was my was my uh, assistant, was my student. You know, I gesture, take his finger, cut it, bring it to me. I'm, as I turn back and I make my way to the waters. <laughs> All right, and then with, you know, while disgusted by this, with a with a practiced motion, is off it comes, kind of pirouettes through the air, snatch it up, Oof. bring it over here. Is your uh, finger? Oof. I just take it from you, and you see me put put the nail in in one of the closed, uh, or narrow mouth, I guess, vials, we'll call it, and I, and I put some herbs in there as well, and uh, I attach, looks like a mechanism that's like a very small claw, like mechanism that I that I hold the top of that, and I sort of dip that into the water, and I'm doing that like as you approach, you know, I'm sort of dipping, like, uh, you know, holding the little claw mechanical contraption, which is holding the sort of petrified vial filled with salts and um, bone, uh, the, the nail of the vigish, and I just sort of dip that into the water trying to collect some. Some sample. Do collect the sample, but um, when you take the thing, your leather hide, not glass, out, it's just still have this, it's getting paler, it's like bleaching just slightly, everything it touches. And you, Kuro, as you get closer, you feel like you feel like it, it's something is like straining, straining your your neck somehow. Something, well, just doesn't feel right. You have that weird clenching feeling in your chest now. As you get closer to the lake, you can just taste the. It, it tastes more and more salty in your mouth. Just something. Wrong with this place. I, I told you of those lakes before. They're filled with salt, and this place there to keep down the. No. No, never mind. And I sort of like back away from that lake, but I keep an eye on it. Ugh. You know, and in another sort of vial again, I, I put the finger in it, um, and I. With the same contraption, you know, I'd take another sample, this time with the uh, severed bigish finger. Um, and, uh, you know, what, and what I do, like, to close them, you know, I have, like, these other uh, little leather, I just put leather on top of it, and I just wrap some little twine around it uh, just to seal it off. But you do uh, yeah, collect these samples without touching this leg, which only with this faint mist, mist, but still highly reflecting the mist as the mist is being, like, colored or, well, light up by the two moons looming over you. Yeah, when I pause and I look at the mist and, and, like, the rippling waters of the lake for a moment. Oh, it's, 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 it's really, as when, when you touch it, there was, like, rings, but it, it's quiet. I just, I just, like, I do pause and I look at it, um, you know, as if... You're in you're in a slight valley. Do you see that? Sorry? You do see your, your reflection. Okay. But they, we are like slightly in a valley, so there's not a lot of wind down here. So. But, you know, I, I take the two samples and I I'm, I make my way uh, away from the lake. Um, also taking note on the uh, devoid of plant life around this area. But, uh, whenever, but when I return, you know, I, I look at Kuro... And I, I sort of nod, and I, and I say in Sindarian, free, go, now, come, to uh, Eros. 
I do. I believe it would be time for my soliloquy, as I will have to go immediately after that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we have to. I didn't get your music, and I'm trying to get Travis. Well, I have it. Good. That <laughs> doesn't help me. What do you mean it doesn't help you? I'm about to help you right now. You want you want it on SoundCloud, right? Yeah, I will find it in two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just, uh, can you give me some... Uh, not sure if I can find it. If it, you just find it on SoundCloud, I'm not sure how to do that. Right, what, what, do you, what do you want it on? Um, I, if you have, like, the title and the, and the artist, I could probably find it. But... Uh, yeah, it's Stradivarius. Eagleheart. Can you write it? I'm dyslexic, and I, that would be nice. If you would do that. Can you I write it down? I know that about you. There you go. Over here, uh, okay. Nope. Don't got it. Sorry. Don't got it on what? What are you using to try to find it? I'm just searching for uh, trying all music. No, I. I oh wait! Ah, <gasps> you hear it? Let's try to move it here. Do I hear it? No. No. As we are lacking slowly. Oh, here's it. Believe we're making that up. <laughs> mm. Just trying to find it on my list. Oh, here. I stare out into the darkness, looking at these new individuals. Hmm. Strange world, this if new. It's not like the continent that reared me. They are alien and strange in their look, in their speech, in their way, in their smell. The smells are strange. Some of them I have found since being here are nearly intoxicated. What shall we find in the flame dance? The wine, the herb, the berry. Oh, I have heard stories of this place. Perhaps the shadow of beauty will loom. My mind may reach out to grasp it, and hold it, and squeeze it, and dream it until that shadow cries its own essence. And still that, that beauty, and hold it, and own it, and have it, and smell it, to find that perfect thing, that scent. Oh, I shall make my mother proud. I shall do my father justice upon the name that was hewn from black glass. I shall find all this new world has to offer. I shall build the legacy that I deserve, that I was born to have. I shall come to know them, to understand them, to find them where they are. I shall learn their ways. Mm. Each of them will play their role in my ascension.
when I finally find time in this night to take reverie, to explore the dream, and finally go into my trance. I find myself in an ancient time looking forth. There are looking from the top of a siege tower. There is an army of Mihan Gi below. They wear black cloaks. Upon their backs are black bows, and wrapped around their arms are barbed black chains, each woven from darkness itself. They howl and sweep through the night, this night that has lasted for days upon days. The sun has never shown its face. Next to the Mihan Gi are ogres. They march in a loose and wild formation carrying enormous axes of blood red iron. They grin their toothy grins and they wish to sink this iron into the flesh of Fae. And with me are the small cloaked figures of the Kitsune. Upon their belts are twin daggers or rapiers or they have crossbows. And we skulk, we skulk through the forest and we have our target in our sights. The golden fronds, the golden woven uh, walls and towers of the golden fae. Tonight, they will know terror and death, and they will never see the sun again. Huh, huh. I awaken from this, from this thought. Uh. Surely, this must come from my, my new compatriots. And I look to that Mihangi, I look to those ogres. Oh, what does this mean? These thoughts, these dark thoughts from a distant time. Ones that I don't understand myself, but... They push themselves into my mind, and what is it they wish to show me? The wheel of fate turns, and I, I am strapped across the rim. I am shoved down deep into the muck and mire of this world. And then I am able to catch my breath for only a moment before I am slammed into the sludge once more. Is it fate that brought me here? Fate that brought me to a Mihan Gi, though his hair be red as blood. They saved me once before, though it was not their intent. They just wished to kill the Vagish, to rip the steel men apart and show them the strength of shadow and fang. They saved me that day, when I was in the snow. Vagish arrow pierced into my ribs. My crimson blood stained the floor. They looked at me after the battle and recognized something in me, something in my dark nature. I'm told to consume our creatures of evil from beyond the histories and times that we know. I wonder if it's true. I wonder if fate pushes me in that direction. What can we rage against? These ogres, they know rage. And here they are, with me, pushed along by fate for all their strength, for all their muscle. They can't do anything against the great wheel. The great wheel pushes ever forward, never stops, never ceases. But that only matters to the people on the rim. This concerns me. Goblins being so far 
from their land of Nif, so close. A sight of a fallen battle, long cast in ruin now. Here are these wretched creatures of nightmare and darkness who dare push my duties. Don't they see that this is important? I see their reactions to the water. Something must be in the air around this place, this place that befouls the ground, breaks the soil, takes its life force. I wonder, I wonder where those who had fallen earlier this day, their reaction to this sight, their ghosts, are they bound here? Is there something you are trying to show me? I do not know. I, uh, damned be to Fatash, the thief. She spites us with her. Gift stolen from the oak. Such is my fate of work that I must be paired up with these lesser creatures. I find it strange this wolf fairy is being spun from darkness. It is a child that which seeks to destroy all will never be my friend. You will always be my enemy. For this land that we find you in, ogre, child of rage, this is what you would have done. This with putrid waters with befouled soil, with bitter air, this is the fate you would have brought upon all. Uh, they do not know. Perhaps I should not hold this grudge against them. I keep my eye about. Be on their side. Show them to the flame dance and I'll be done with them. Or perhaps further experimentation will be needed as to their reaction to the air, to the soil. I wonder what happened, what has been happening to that Kuro, these strange faces, I do not know why. Incessant speaking, it does not think, it simply talks. Perhaps he's an ill effect of this ruined place, this ruined land. Uh, we will see. We will see. Thank you all for watching.